the universal grain, a fundamental social research project by Alatra International Public Movement. Unique, one of a kind, international social research initiated and carried out by people themselves. In more than 140 countries of the globe, people of various nationalities, religions and occupations all over the world join this large-scale research. Collaborative research, translations, international interviews, sociological surveys, web conferences, video comments by scientists and experts from different countries of the world, international cooperation and mutual understanding. The common goal to reveal the universal grain of spiritual knowledge by studying common primordial spiritual grains from primary sources of world religions and scientific works to find possibilities and options in leveling manifestations of the spiritual and moral crisis in the context of globalization to show the characteristics of the spirit of unity and the contradictions of consciousness in the spiritual heritage of human civilization to find the common social and spiritual moral factors of consolidating the world community. What is the meaning of the human's life? What lies at the foundation of all religions and sacred scriptures of the world? What unites all people on Earth? Large-scale research conducted by the participants of Alatra International Public Movement based on the keys of the primordial knowledge People from all over the world share their innermost feelings about the spiritual truth. What main choice faces humanity and each person today? In the video, The Universal Grain, Part 1, The Choice. The International Social Research Project, The Universal Grain, is an initiative of people all over the world, participants of Alatra International Public Movement. People with great joy and interest study to explore the primary sources of world religions with the goal of discovering and revealing in them the common universal spiritual grain of truth. Participants of the Universal Grain Project initiated a creation of a global film on a very important subject in everyone's life, the subject of choice. Inspired people, experts, scientists, archaeologists, ethnographers and linguists have united in a common goal to identify and discover for each other what unites all of us, what is the basis, of the fundamental human choice. Where is the answer to the question why we are here? We, humans, as spiritual beings first of all, what is our true purpose on Earth? Studying this topic, participants of the International Social Research Project The Universal Grain rely on the key knowledge given in the books written by Anastasia Novich and videos with participation of Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. They allow us to see the common spiritual knowledge which can be found in all cultures and all religions of the world through centuries, linguistic and cultural concepts, Paradigms of perception and philosophical theories have been changing, but the most important remains unchanged. It is the spiritual essence of humans, which lives through centuries, and it lives in every culture, it lives in every tradition and every religion, only if one could see it. And it is possible to see this universal, common to all spiritual knowledge thanks to the information contained in the book Alatra and in the videos with Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. And due to this opportunity, today the participants of the project The Universal Grain, with great interest and enthusiasm, research the primary sources of world religions, various teachings and beliefs, in order to study and discover this unifying truth and feel on their own this single spiritual essence that unites all of us. While reading the book Alatra, we notice that the etymology of the words reveals their true meaning. What is etymology? 
Etymology is the science that studies the root of words, their origin and their real meaning. It became interesting to study the true meaning of the word choice. What is its origin? How did people in ancient times understand this word in different languages, among different nationalities? Modern researchers who spoke with the participants of the project The Universal Grain from different countries also noted that the thorough analysis of the root of the word, the shades of its meaning and the ways of transformation give an understanding of the importance that people have put in the word choice centuries ago. Languages change with our consciousness, but the roots leave their essence. If we study etymology, we can restore the way of thinking of ancient people. We're making a big mistake if we think they thought like us. If we're looking for a common grain, we need to restore how they thought, how they perceived. There's a tendency, as we go back in time, that the languages of various cultures are more similar. A feature of language called ultra-conserved words, and that's the idea that words that are very significant to a language tend to stay in the language a very long time. Everything comes down to root phonetics. It's a single syllable. The single syllables were associated with um, cosmological concepts or symbolism. As it is known, the Proto-Slavic language is the ancestor of all Slavic languages. Therefore, in modern Slavic languages, the words denoting choice sound the same. The etymology of the word in all these languages is the same. Each Slavic group, Russian, Ukrainian, Belarusian, West Slavic group, Polish, Czech, Slovak, Kasubian, and Southern Slavs. We also turn to the Old Slavic Dictionary of the Ostrume Gospel and try to connect related words. Found these words, which mean take over, connect, collect, is to elect, having the will, free. And the word choice comes from Proto-Indo-European root, which means carry, lead, bring, give. Primordially related root, which refers to the contents, compensation, birth. Birth? This is a very interesting point. This means that what I choose to give my attention to is what is born, meaning that is what's inside me. Also, participants from Germany found an interesting etymology of the word choice. Hello all from Heidelberg University. We are biologists, bioinformatics. Together with Alena, we participate in the project The Universal Grain. Here, together with other participants from different parts of the world, we are trying to find different information, those grains that are contained in some cultures, religions. What really unites people? Yes, what brings people together. We are looking for it in the primary sources, trying to find a meaning in the etymology of words. What could those words denote? In this program, it is the word choice. The first thing I wanted to share is how the etymology of the word choose was found. First, I opened the Oxford English Dictionary and found that this word is derived from an old French word choisir and from an old English cousin. It has pro-Indo-European roots and this word is goes jeux. I was curious why all these words, except the word to choose, have the concept of tasting something. For example, in the Indo-Iranian group, in the Persian, this word came to mean to love, love. It has always been interesting to find and search the sources, the primary sources here that was available. In the dictionary of Indo-Germanisches Etymologies Wörterbuch, and what got me interested is that the word gives jews has a lot of meanings. Kosten, kost, enjoy, geschmacken, geschmacked, to taste. In the German and Celtic dictionary, it came to mean to choose. And in the Indo Iranian and Albanian, the same word begin to mean to love. An interesting point is that this word means gives, gives. 
to laugh and based on the knowledge that is given in the books of Anastasia Novik and videos with Igor Mikhailovich, you really begin to understand the importance of the word choice. The guy said that choice means to taste. So it turns out to taste is to feel. Yes, and it is interesting that the root of the word choice means love. And I remembered the etymology of the French word, from which came the English word choice. I will quote the etymological dictionary. Choix, power of choosing, from Old French choix, one's choice, fact of having a choice, from verb choisir, to choose, distinguish, discern, recognize, perceive, see. Interestingly, the word choice has a meaning to recognize and feel. By studying the works of philosophers, religious thinkers, scientists from around the world, from different centuries, you understand that many people have come to the true essence of choice. In the early Christian theology is already seen the same image, the resemblance of deity which each person keeps inside. Yes, it is freedom, the freedom of will. In the speech of Merendol, the dignity of human, it is remarkably said that animals remain the same as when they came out of their mother's womb. They never change. The angels of heaven, they remain as they are destined to be in eternity. They don't change either. Adam, you alone, the Lord says to the first human, you alone are capable of degrading yourself to an animal state or to elevate yourself to an angel. The seeds of diverse life are in you. You choose who you want to be. The main subject of study of one of the representatives of existentialism, Miguel de Unamuno, is the spiritual life of the individual. The subject, in his opinion, is focused on solving the contradictions between the finite and the infinite. The choice, in Miguel de Unamuno's understanding, is the choice between death and immortality of our existence, life in history or life in eternity. I think, if you ask each of us, Everyone will say that, yes, I have the right to choose. It is my right and it's not predetermined by anyone. Even though classical sociology tells us that our behavior is tied to the social environment, society and determined by it. The French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu claims that our entire living environment, he calls it habitus, is a living space that we are exploring. And in this environment the person always determines his behavior himself. He believes that the current modern life, social dynamics in the society and social mobility are influential on the personal choice of a person. Therefore, the human choice is contingent not only on their own internal you know, cognitive processes or reactive, interactive, it relates to their interaction with others. So the choice is not my own, but it is lived within the community. Particularly, choice is mine, but when I live in the society, the choice is contingent on other people's It is also interesting that in German the word choice is the same with the word willen, meaning will, freedom, which in Slavic languages means freedom. If we look further into the dictionary to try to find the meaning, we will find that it is the ability to implement the goal we set for ourselves. In German, the word Wahl is also associated with the word freedom, as was told by the teacher of the German language. Desire and will. We are talking about freedom. And so will, freedom, choice. Freedom is connected with choice. If I do not have a choice, then there is no freedom. This is clear. Mm -hmm. You can say... No freedom, no choice. To have a choice, you must be free. <laughs> and your will has to be free. No? As I have said, choice is a very important concept. 
every choice is important. Because a human is the only living being who has freedom and stands before the need to make his own choice and must choose what to do himself. Each animal has a specific program that gets implemented. It performs certain actions regardless of whether it wants it or not, because that is its nature. A person needs to choose, let's say, his goals, what he is going to do and who he is going to become. This is a necessity and is a part of his choice. So in this sense the choice is very important. It is interesting that my professor of philosophy at university, Mr. Hubble, confirmed that the choice is inherent only to a human and not animals. Choice is what differentiates a human from an animal. Animals do not have a will. They have instincts. They can't say, today I choose this. But a human has a will. He has the ability to make choices. And when we choose, we usually choose between good and evil. And this phenomenon is typical only for humans. What can help a person to make a choice in favor of good? First of all, every person feels that here good and evil is present. It's already inside of him. Intuitively, he knows or feels what is good and what is bad. We need to find out if there is some good here. Or as our fathers said, kindness, truth and beauty are common to all. A person can choose because he has a soul. A person has a piece of God, has a soul. And this particle gives him the ability to choose. A human is a spirit. Human is a personality, and it is the personality who makes the choice. And this is very well explained by Igor Mikhailovich Danilov in the program about spiritual grace. But the choice is always up to those who are not just spiritualized, but who are soul-filled. The one who is soul-filled has an opportunity to live forever. Those who are spiritualized, they just live. Whereas a human being, unlike all other living creatures, is soul-filled. Since he is soul-filled, then it means, what does he have? The right of choice. In fact, the first realization that a person is indeed free in his choice, it is the first little step towards the spiritual world. This is also important. In ancient times, people knew that man was initially free in his choice. The choice is not just a path, but an internal goal. In the book Valatra, there are words that life is a purposeful movement. It means a person can choose a goal and move towards it, and they are free to choose their purpose. Speaking of my feelings, I can say that the choice for me, based on what I heard today, is the choice that we have from the very beginning, from birth, what we have inside, and what the Lord has given us. This is also freedom. And we found that the German Wall comes from the Proto-Indo-European root Bell, which also had the form of Var. And from the root Var, the word choice is formed in Sanskrit, Farsi, Western and other ancient languages. That's right, because I researched the word choice, namely in Sanskrit, and I discovered that it has many deep and interesting meanings. And indeed, the root var is very diverse. And I wanted to share that in general, Sanskrit as a language is very interesting, because every word in it, and even every vowel, can have several meanings. And we learned about this from the extraordinary ambassador of India in Ukraine, Manoj Kumar Bahati.
Recently, I was reading somewhere that uh, latest archaeological finds in Ukraine says us that uh, and about 3,000 years ago, people used to use the same language and it was similar to uh, Indo-Aryan languages. Mm -hmm. Even today, there are many words and symbols which are very close to Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. You know some of them like Dwer, Dwar. Dwa is in Sanskrit also. Dwa is too in Ukrainian also. There are many such things. Sanskrit is an amazing language because all the alphabets, Devanagari alphabets, are designed in a very systematic and scientific manner. But each of these sounds, k, k, g, g, each of these individual sounds have more than one meaning. For example, the root of the word choice, va, has many meanings, the most interesting of which are move on, stay, exist, be and love. It means that whatever words and roots we use, we come across the word love always. That is so. Polina, do you remember you told about interesting meaning of the root var? Could you please share? Yes, it's true. If we turn to related words in other languages, for example, then we can find out that there is such an ancient Scandinavian goddess. She was the goddess of alliances, vows. Also, the ancient Indian god, Vauna, was also responsible for justice and for what is true. That is, it turns out that the word choice is connected not only with the concept of love, but also with the concept... Choose the truth. Yes. It's great. Our today's conversation shows that basically all the words from the time immemorial, they had spiritual significance. And we come to that unique deep feeling, which is in everyone and unites all of us. Thus, knowing the etymology of words, you can also more deeply feel, understand it, what our ancestors put into this word, how to, how to live right, our today's conversation shows that, in principle, all the words from time immemorial, they had spiritual significance, and we come to that unique deep feeling, which is in everyone, and unites all of us. If we speak different languages, Czech, Russian, German here, we understand each other, even when we do not know these languages. And again, we come to that one language, to the grain, to the internal alatra, which each of us really has. Today we have voiced a lot of everything, religions and words, but the spiritual path by which a person moves towards, God is one, and people have known about this since ancient times and they understood that their main goal is a movement along the spiritual path, and therefore the word, to choose, acquired such shades as to live, to love, to take responsibility. To be born. Yes, to be born, and finally to be born as a spiritual being. I have also discovered such an interesting moment in the book of Anastasia Novich, the Sensei Four, about the choice. I'll read a quote. In the Persians, in Zoroastrianism, the immortal human soul was called Fravashi. Incidentally, it is a derivative word from the Western designations Fravart, to make a choice. It means attaining the eternity is directly related to the implementation of the choice. Yes, and that topic was researched by our friends, participants of the project Universal Grain. With the guys from the Universal Grain project, we could find the word Fravashi that is commonly perceived to have the root bar, uh, that is to choose. From the right constructed version, pravati in Avestan usually appear as shu, pravashi. The same root in the sense of to choose, uh, to profess faith is found in the word pravarane, uh, the name of Zoroastrian uh, prayer. 
And it turns out that in their live conversation, it is said that the person at the age of 11 12 years made his one conscious choice. A person made a choice whom he serves to, Ahura Mazda or Ariman. And the symbol of faith was set, which you've just mentioned, and it is called in Zoroastrianism Fravarane. Also, an interesting moment was noticed that the word Fravarane contains the Indo European root var. As we already know, it means to love, live, act, choose. And Fravarane exactly means I choose. It will be worth to mention here that in Armenian there is also a word which is Havad, and the meaning of which is um, to believe, like mm-hmm. fate. One of the versions of its etymology is that it uh, comes from Pravarane, Pravarti. As you mentioned, it has the root var, is like to choose. Uh, right now we have a word var in Armenian that is uh, like bright, meaning bright. And also in the symbol of faith, uh, it is said that, for example, in Russian, uh, so it is in the present time. So for me, it also I have this understanding today that it means that you uh, every every single moment, every present moment. So it means every now you prove your choice. Thank you for mentioning that too. And when you said "vibirada" in present form of the verb and. Uh, I like to mention also the word choose in Armenian, which is uh, also Andre. Noun of this word, Andir, is something that is selected, the best ones, really good. So Andre is kind of something that you choose the best for you and you follow it. In Armenian, there are a lot of uh, synonyms. So Andre Zanazanel, Zanazanel is um, too different. The same, in the same way, the word entrele uh, has the same meaning, to differentiate and pick the good for you. means I pick the good one and I leave the bad one. So exactly. it, again, it means that even before people understood that they can choose only one, only exactly. something, what is good for them. I'm surprised that the action of choice is now translated as a symbol of faith. After all, it's not about implicit faith, but about conscious choice, which is based on the knowledge of a person, and that a person in his daily life chooses to serve God, and he does this consciously, having knowledge distinguishing between good and evil within oneself. Currently, it turns out that the symbol of faith has such a meaning that a person simply must fulfill some dogmas. But before, this actually meant that the person chose. He chose God, one God. That is, he didn't choose religion but he chose to serve God. We mentioned the symbol of faith. Here in the Slavic words, faith, the root of origin, va, which means choice. Right, and in German language the word faith, or Glaube, comes from the word Liebe, which means faith, love, God, It's all the same. This means there is no difference in faith, absolutely none. Faith has one meaning and one essence. Only one faith exists. And its essence is to love. The choice was based on the knowledge, on the understanding of the truth. And the truth is love. And if I've chosen, then I no longer just believe, I already know. This means that when a person has come into contact with the truth, with love, he has only one choice left. And he chooses God. He chooses love. This choice is one and the same for every person on the planet. The choice of one God. The choice of love. Indeed, people from all over the world confirm these words. Participants of the International Social Research Project The Universal Grain initiated the creation of social video survey with people all over the globe. In thousands of video interviews, people of different professions, religions, nationalities and ages share their understanding and feeling of what unites all of us, people living on one planet, what we all have internally, the same, the one, close and familiar to each of us. 
Sincere and interesting answers of people from different countries really bring us to the understanding of what is already known to every person. This mutual value for everyone, the spiritual nature, which unites us all. This understanding inspires because it really proves by facts that the system divides and people unite. And people unite by their own choice. That's what we've been able to confirm thanks to the international social interviews. On the vast lands of the far north and on the hot latitudes of the equator, on the streets of Dubai, Berlin, Atlanta, Kiev and many other cities, people share the same idea. Hello, we are in the city of Chak Chabé. We are in London today at Tower Bridge. We are in New York. In the Czech Republic. It's one of the old cities of Morocco. This is Alatra TV, South Korea, and we are going to take an interview. For the Universal Brain Project. We are carrying a sociological research project. We are shooting we participate a participate in the global project. I am a participant of Alatra International Public Movement. Uh, social, uh, sociological research. Yeah. And a part of International Volunteer Social Research Project, the Universal Grain which aims to unite people all over the world. That project is to find out what unites all people on the moral and the spiritual level. What is common for each of us? What unites people all over the world? You can call it love, you can call it empathy, you can call it God. We have different words, words for that. That's uh, what unites us. We are humans and we can understand each other with our hearts. It unites that God is one. And God is a spirit. God, He is everywhere. God is within you. God is inside of me. And He unites all of us. Therefore, we must love each other. Yeah, our experience should be similar because uh, despite of different uh, beliefs, we have, uh, it's only one God. We are all united by the fact that we are all children of God. Color, race, religion, doesn't matter. We all love one God. You are representatives of the Nenets people. Tell me, please, what do you think unites all people eternally, regardless of borders and territories? It's love kindness and good relationship between people. Anyway, God is one. God unites us, all of us. In one goal, like uh, for God, but uh, for example, we, ha uh, we are Muslim, Christian, Catholic, and then uh, etc. But uh, the same goal, but the, the way is different. Different way. But the same, the same goal. God is one. Sikh religion, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. God. Hindu Hindu religion, Ram, God. Mm -hmm. Muslim religion, Allah, God. Solo, name different. Si, si. Name different. Mm -hmm. But God is one. Mm -hmm. God living anybody, mm -hmm. any person, any people. And it's like in languages. We have many foreign languages. But in fact, there is only one language, the spiritual language. It is the same with God. He is one. Yes, of course, He is one. Allah is one. There is only one God, of course. True that there is only one God. God is one and God is a spirit. And every person is feeling that it is a lie. It's like one God who's protecting the whole of Earth. So I think God has created us as just humans. And I don't consider that different religious or different caste will bring any kind of boundaries to it. And I, I don't personally practice that. And I consider everyone as like my fellow human beings. And I'm happy. This is another realm, a spiritual realm, and you don't need big signs. I don't brood about this. In general, you can feel anywhere. After all, a person feels inside. This face flows from inside, from the person himself. And this faith, faith in God unites, I believe. This is true. It shows itself as kindness, attitude. 
This is what I adhere to 100%. In fact, God is one, and God is a spirit. According to the mind's thing, there is only one God. There are different religions, but for all religions, there is only one God. In Islam religion, we call God as Allah. In other religions, He is called in different ways, but the meaning is the same. We all speak about the only one God. We are Punjabi, we are Sikh from India, North India. So, also in our holy book, our Bible, there our uh, God, uh, like Guru, wrote that God is one. That's that's true. I know uh, God is one. The Bible says that the world was with us. The world was God, and the world was with us. Which means God is one, and there is spirit of God in us. We came from a religion called the Druze. We believe in one God. One God thing, it's it's usual. So I think that's the main thing that unites us. God absolutely is the only one. There are Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, and we are pagans. But in the general sense, he is the only one for all of us. I'm a Jain. I have also studied many religions, my own religion, Hinduism. I grew up in a Christian school. Uh, I come from Africa. I'm Indian, living in England. And I've seen this over the years, and I say it all the time, that it's the same soul who was one God, but just different different name. God is amongst all of us, yeah. in all of us. You know, everybody has the power to be God. I think that in everyday life we are coming closer to God. This can be seen in our everyday activities, when we show kindness, fairness and respect to other. This is a personal relationship between a person and God. There are people who understand the existence of the spiritual world. We are all human beings and we all live on one land. Each of us is a brother and sister. Our brothers and sisters are Catholics and Christians and Jews. It doesn't matter. It is important to be at peace with yourself, to be in harmony, share good moments, share the moment of here and now. But it doesn't matter how to call it. It is important, probably, to feel and do, and to unite. Yeah, because there is only one God, there is only one religion, that is humanity. We believe in everyone, so we believe that God is one, so we can pray anywhere. I have been working in the Department of Culture for 15 years, and I have been managing the Armenian school for 15 years. There are people of different nationalities, of different religions around me, Muslims, Christians. I think God is one, and for all of us there is no difference. To go to the mosque or to the church, God is one for us. We don't know if God is a Muslim. We don't know if God is, is a Christian or Hindu and otherwise. So God is love and God is one. I think what unites all of us is the soul and the fact that we are humans, despite many religions and nationalities. There used to be one faith, it's just been divided, one faith in God. Of course, all people are brothers. We have one Creator, Allah. Christians, Muslims, Jews and all other people on Earth, we all have one Creator, Allah. God is one. We might have a different way of approaching Him, praying to Him. Like we have different religions. Like you might be a Muslim, you might be a Christian, I might be a Muslim, you might be a Christian. We have different churches, Catholic, Orthodox, but it's just one God that we are serving. It's just one God. One God that created everybody. So there is, one, there is a bond that, is, like, that unites us God is one, He is almighty, He is eternal, He does not need anything, He is one. God is one, He is just called differently in different languages. The God is only the one which is equal, which is there, which is there in ourselves and it is equal to every religion and it is equal in every religion, every culture. So God is within us. Our faith, our faith in God is always the same and will always be the same. Of course, we are all united by love to Allah, friendship, peace. Everything can unite us if you have love for any people inside of you. 
I talk to people from different confessions, Adventists and Baptists and those that we have in our city. And I also wanted to understand where the truth was, and in fact, who is God. It turned out that He is one. All religions say God is one, but then, uh, which is, I believe is true. I respect all religions. I don't believe in any. That's my personal opinion. But at the same time, uh, if you if you look at it, it's people uh, following certain religions. They take the convenience out of religion, and. Uh, always say that my religion is best, our religion is best, that one's religion is not great, their thoughts and uh, views is different. Uh, I think over years just people have changed uh, completely in, in terms of uh, uh, looking at what religion's purpose was, taken out convenience, what they liked out of religion, they've taken it out, what they didn't like, they just uh, ignored that part completely and they say, you know, they changed the religion uh, themselves, you know, what has been taught earlier and what is being taught now is completely different. I think they can't because I think they are all based on the same few important principles, but then they kind of get caught up in almost like competition between one another instead of understanding what the actual like, reason for having a religion. It's God's presence in your life, so it's like the Holy Spirit was what was down here. This is the feeling of sincere, divine love, which is one for all of us. It's like one big family of one great Father. And every child can call his Father in his own way. God, Allah, Krishna, Buddha, but love does not change. We are all the same. It doesn't matter where we come from, which nationality, which religions and all that. At the end, we are just a human and a human must be love each other. And You are white, I am an African, and there is no difference. The blood that flows in you is the same as in me. This means that God is the one God. There are no Russians, Cameroonians, no French. We're all together. We are one and belong to God. This is God who unites people. He wants peace. And He is the one who creates peace on earth. And this is God who unites people. For me, it is a fact that there is one God. And everyone calls Him in a different ways. But to everyone this is something very personal. And every human understands and feels it, indeed. God is one, thus it doesn't matter to which church you come to The language to doesn't make a difference. Yes. It's what's in your heart. Yes, really. I mean, not the color of your skin. You know, it doesn't matter. Nothing at all. You must be a person first of all. Of, of course. And to believe in humanity. The real truth is in every human, in some place, in his heart, and at some point in life they find it, they change, change themselves. God is one, and for me, they called him God, they called him Allah. There are many names. It does not, well, depend on the name. It's invisible force. I really need it, like my vitals, like my heart. I love them, and thanks to them I live. This is my experience. It is not people who will be helping me. Because when I was little, I already knew that God exists. That's why somehow I already knew anyway. Everyone, somewhere inside, somewhere deep, inside of their soul, knows that yes, it's not visible. The spiritual world comes first. For all people in the world, the presence of Allah and His love for all is the same, regardless of where the person was born. We have different cultures, different religions, but ultimately we all love the same God. Such sincere answers of people prove that everyone who is alive feels. And it doesn't matter in which place of the earth one is, what religion or nationality he represents, God is one. And people have always lived by this truth, and this is clearly reflected in ancient tree. This universal knowledge was passed from person to person, 
From spirit to spirit, it mostly wasn't even written down and only myths, legends and tall stories remained. And the participants of the project The Universal Grain decided to investigate this topic more deeply to find out the way ancient people lived with this spiritual knowledge, passed it on and how it was reflected in their culture. Now, I am reading the last pages of Alatra, and on page 742, it is said that understanding one's own dual nature helped one make an informed choice. To which of the natures, the spiritual or the animal one, to devote his transient life and which will to serve. By the way, the basis of the primordial knowledge about the collective and individual minds later gave rise to archaic beliefs. Each nation also had a rich mythology of the origin of a human being and the world, which was originally based on the single grain of the primordial knowledge that was common to all people. The guys shared that there is such work from German scientist Wilhelm Smith who analyze scientifically culture and traditions of the people who still live by their old principles. I went to Humboldt Public Library, and in one of the descriptions of North Californian Indians and Fugians, I found that they had that higher being that embodied the best qualities of which people strived for. It's interesting that Smith made it very clear that it was precisely alive, meaning it was real, like a part of everyday life, that is, it was fully integrated into it. Wilhelm Smith studied faiths and culture of Aboriginal peoples who didn't have a written language. The scientist used the term primitive monotheism in his work, giving evidence that people who didn't have written language had a concept of the one higher being, the creator of all. Wilhelm Smith believed that various forms of totemism, shamanism, various magic cults appeared at the late stages of culture development as a result of spiritual degradation of society and due to the loss of the primordial knowledge. Because at the root of people's faith, there were concepts of the one higher being, different from all the earthly and material. Among the names of this being, one can encounter, such as the Father, the Father of Heaven, the Maker, the Creator, the Omnipresent, the All-Knowing, and so on. It's interesting that according to the scientist, this being had no specific image or form. It embodied virtue, righteousness, and all the best qualities which man aspired to possess. When we turn to the scientific knowledge, whether it is a Russian scientific school or Western scientific school, it is the same in the fact that any nation has the one creator. On any continent, every nation has its own faith and understanding of the Supreme God. And when they started to study it, let us say impartially, well, for example, let's immerse ourselves into some African tribe and see what they know. And it turns out that they know practically the same that Europeans know. Even more, it may just seem to us, because we have lost a lot. How do the African nations perceive the unity? The oneness of God. You know, when I was in Dogal country, the indigenous African religion, where God is oneness, like we all come from a creator. God is everywhere versus... And inside. And, it, and, it, and that's another one too, inside as well. It's just the connection, everything's, everything's aside. God is everywhere, but everything, God is inside you as well. Again, since we come from the source, mm -hmm. the, the source is inside us as well. So yes. that's what I observed and experienced when I went yeah. to Africa. Yeah. I lived in Nicaragua for three months. I took part in a social project. What have I learned? I've personally learned much more from the people who live there. And this is indeed a great experience. What is certainly clear is that spirituality has necessarily always been a part of every human culture. And I strongly believe in that. Self-reflection is inherent to people. This is exactly responsibility to themselves and their conscience. And at the same time, we have a wonderful gift to feel ourselves as a part of some greater whole. The ancients obviously had access 
to that type of spiritual knowledge. So they were more spiritual than us. They were not more like religion believers. They were more spiritual because they had access to spiritual senses. Then we would differently see the world around us and the universe. I think that it is very important for a person to understand from the very early age that there is some higher force. It doesn't matter how we call it. I think it is secondary how it's called. But it is the main part of what it means to be a human. What about the myths and epics in ancient cultures? Or was it like a sample what you have to apply to your life? Yeah. We, we now call it uh, mythology because it has, in our Western society, it has a, has a different um, point and, and meaning in society. But in ancient societies, their mythology, so to speak, it was very real and it was part of their society. And it was indeed um, a code of moral value. Mm -hmm. Like a guide. Yes, the mythology was an example how to live by. It is true. And there are also big uh, morality stories. Legends and myths come out of the experiences of people. Understanding of what is good and what I like to call less good. And when we look at stories and legends and myths that are passed on from generation to generation, it's basically to, to guide us as a society about good living and what is not so good living. The deepest feeling of belonging to the origin and perception of it as an attribute existed in all ancient cultures as a matter of fact. As it should be, they didn't make it any teaching, religion. This was reality in which they lived. When a person understands certain regularities of spiritual development, he recognizes them in any culture no matter how different they may be called. When we look at remnants of archaeological deposits and settlements, we're able to understand how they were thinking, how they were interacting with each other, what was important in that society. Interpreting archaeological finds is quite complex, and it all begins with a conversation. Hi, Lard, it's Natasha from London. I'm an archaeologist, so don't worry if you want to be technical with something, we can then break it down after. The first question is looking at the common grains of all ancient civilizations. We know that you've looked into ancient Egypt, the Polynesian, the Dogons, and so on. Could you see maybe the, the fundamental core that's kind of similar in each of these civilizations? The first evidence of the tradition is at Gobekli Tepe. The symbolic elements we see there are the same symbolic elements that pass forward to the Shakti cult in India. Yeah. Um, there also seems to be direct connection at 10,000 BC to Egypt. Now with Egypt, we have matching phonetics and we have matching concepts. If you go to the Maori language in New Zealand, you see connections to every era and every culture that I've studied. Uh, they have um, their connections to the Tamil language in India. There are connections in Turkish. Mm -hmm. There's a language called Faroese in uh, uh, the region of Orkney Island, also has some connections. Uh, it's a single syllable. The single syllables were associated with um, cosmological concepts, their symbolism. And so once you understand what those Phonemes represent that. You understand that Nu represents water and Ra represents the concept of the sun. Mm -hmm. Those are root concepts that you can put together. In some languages, they just combine the phon phonetics together to create larger concepts. It's like a building block system. And that's what people, what, from my perspective, when people talk about a universal language in ancient times, mm -hmm. it, I see it as a universal language of cosmology, that this was not necessarily the universal language that every culture spoke, but it certainly looks like a universal language everyone was taught. We're able to see the same signs, the same symbols across the world throughout history, from 20,000 years ago all the way to today's civilization. We can see symbols such as the alat, such as the figures with their hands up showing this, and this is quite significant, having their both hands up like this.
So circle signifies infinity. And infinity is the symbol of God because God is infinite. So the circle in the Aladra symbol, I think in all ancient cultures, circle was a symbol of infinity and hence of God. So yes, in this Aladra symbol also, this perfectly fits the Flavashi symbol. And the crescent moon sort of a thing, it may or may not stand for wings, I'm not very sure. But a crescent moon in Zoroastrian religion was also a very auspicious symbol. Because the moon is the holder of spirituality. So the crescent moon may be a symbol of energy, maybe an, uh, an emblem, emblem of uh, um, God's energy. Like if you have seen the bar reliefs on uh, the, uh, the Achaemenian astodans at Naqsh Rustam, at Persepolis in Iran, they always have the sun and moon together in one corner. So in this Alatra symbol, definitely the circle is there which represents God. So according to me, that's my understanding. When you look at this one here, these are the all four different uh, stages we mentioned. If you shred all the karmas, then you achieve ultimate salvation. So at that time, the soul goes all the way up to here and resides there forever. So this is the one which we call it Siddha Shila. So out of these four different uh, stages of a life, you want to get out of this one and you want to reach that particular point. A human being is the only one who can achieve this one. I'm a participant of the Universal Grain Project. I'm very happy to take part in it as it helps so many people around the world to understand what unites us all as human beings. What do we all have in common? And today I'm in a Buddhist monastery. When I arrived to the monastery, I've noticed the sign of Latra at the top of the stupa. And I was very curious, what does it mean for them? And I found some information in their library, which, is, which says that the crescent moon symbolizes the aspiration to enlightenment and increase of bodhicitta. The sun disk symbolizes wisdom and emptiness. The union of moon and sun represents the convergence of method and wisdom, or relative and absolute bodhicitta. Talking to the visitors of the museum, the first thing that we say is that all that we see around us is something temporary. These are things, people, even appearance. But everybody has the inner. That is what they pass on as a heritage, this inner support that lives in us. The inner aspiration, it really unites. Ancient people in ancient civilizations were spiritual, and languages of signs and symbols was understandable for them. When you do researches and observations, you begin to understand how much we are all connected and united. The thing is, when I was reading the book Alatra, first of all, from the point of view as an art historian, I was very impressed that so much attention had been given to the culture, symbols and signs. This knowledge is still preserved. It's specific to ancient Armenia, Georgia, and can be found in frescoes, temple architecture, which means they really exist. People knew it was natural for them as for us to talk now. They wanted to express it. They were living with that understanding and we have evidence of it. It was uniting them. Culture and civilization were connected and exactly at that time civilizations flourished because there was a synthesis, harmony, everything was in balance. Since the ancient times, people knew that not a single choice within a day remains unnoticed, first of all for the person itself and for the future which he or she is forming. 
People of Egypt knew that their thoughts and deeds during their time in Earth determined the afterlife destiny. Despite the death of material body, person could continue to live and live forever. We talked about our research, that about this universal grain knowledge that inspired us in the Kalatra. Mm. You mentioned that in Egypt there was an ocean of after-death destiny, that uh, every person would be responsible for their actions, for everything that they did in life. How is it represented? in their religion. Well, you see that um, in spite of what many people think is the ancient Egyptians were not very um, not focused on death. They were very focused on life. Well, you see that in, in many aspects of uh, Egyptian life it's not so much um, in life, but it's what we see from the archaeological record is that you see it in funerary text about how one should have lived. And one very famous example is the Book of the Dead and that's a compilation of um, text, pyramid text. And um, we call that a Book of the Dead, but it's not really like a book uh, like mm -hmm. this. Um, what you see is that um, what is very well known is the so-called judgment of Osiris. And that is the famous scene that uh, the deceased enters um, the hall of the dead and he has to face Osiris and tell him or show him that he or she has lived properly. And that is a, a very big weighing scale on which his heart is measured against the truth. Mm -hmm. And truth um, is this uh, Egyptian concept of ma'at. And it actually means balance, but it's being used in, in um, the notion of, of truth. Mm -hmm. And ma'at is also personified as mm -hmm. a goddess. And she has a, a feather on uh -huh. Uh, on the head as a, um, a crown. Mm -hmm. And this concept of Ma'at was a very um, important thing. The people of Egypt not only sought the truth, they also believed that it always abides with them, and the world was imbued with it. One sage from the ancient Egypt said, Ma'at comes to be beside you. Ma'at is present wherever you are and accompanies you, wherever you go, so you are overfilled with it. For Egyptians, to serve truth, wisdom and the whole world order embodiment of which was Ma'at, was above all. You see that in the famous way of the heart scene, is that in the Book of the Dead, it's always being portrayed as in a proper balance. Mm -hmm. It's never so that one thing is heavier than the other. Mm -hmm. And that that was also because of, if you depict something in Egyptian art, it had to be um, real, it had to be true. Um, when we get back to that uh, weighing uh, scene, is that you see that um, if the heart is heavier than the truth, mm -hmm. then that's that's a wrong thing, and then the heart would be, would be eaten by uh, a monster, mm -hmm. thus condemning the deceased to an eternal death. If the scales balanced, this meant the person had led a good life. He was told to come in this broad hall of the two goddesses of what is right, because he knew them. Exactly this phrase mentioned in the chapter 125 of the Book of the Dead showed that ancient Egyptians knew that to gain the spiritual freedom, the person had to get internal knowledge of the spiritual world. There is one ancient Egyptian phrase, for a single day gives to eternity, an hour does good for the future, and God is aware of him who serves him. Yes, in order to join the spiritual world, you should stay on the side of the spiritual world and become a spirit yourself then you will join it. That is, a spirit can merge with a spirit, matter with matter, fire with fire, water with water. However, fire cannot be mixed with water. Numerous examples, interviews, all these give us clear understanding that nowadays people really internally feel and know about their own real nature, about why we are here, why and for what. I definitely think that we all are spiritually and morally united in this world, regardless of the nationality, religion and territorial origin of people. 
We are first and foremost human. Uh, we all have God in common. We are all children of our Heavenly Father or children of God. Um, so while we live on this earth, we are all brothers and sisters. And we are united in purpose. And our purpose is to um, live with God again. God is a spirit. We cannot see him, cannot touch him, but we communicate with him. He is everywhere. Of course, there is only one God, and God is a spirit. I cannot even imagine how it can be otherwise. In every religion it talks about it. God is everywhere. God is all-seeing, omnipresent. He is everywhere, and everything is God. And it is logical that God is a spirit. There is no such a man in heaven with a white beard looking like a human. It's just a fiction made up by people. There is one God and because He is a spirit, He has created everything spiritually and us spiritually as well. So <clears throat> because of that, He already has everything. <laughs> there is nothing that we could give Him um, that He doesn't already have. Um, but the one thing that we can give Him is our heart. One thing, God doesn't need material things. Just gratitude and love. Yes, I think the person doesn't need anything material, price, to share with God something. I think they just need themselves and to believe. For living any person, living you, living me, living... Neither icons nor rituals can replace the purity of the soul. that temple which you are making in your soul. God indeed is a spirit. Why? Because He is beyond our understanding. And the spirit is that word by which we can formulate the definition which we can understand by our mind. We have the ability to be able to communicate with God. For our own personal spiritual growth, it's only between us and God. Everything depends on a person on his internal mood for it. The rest, I think, is something external, some trappings, I would say. In reality, it depends only on a person whether he will come to God or not, and till the end of his days will search for some aids and middlemen in this endeavor. A person comes to God without any middleman, religions, frameworks, I believe this path is only his own, which he has to walk himself. You always go through yourself, you find your own path in life. Mm -hmm. Every person has their own uh, responsibility, relationship with God, by himself. Mm -hmm. That's all. There is not, not needed to be like a middleman or something like a church. It says, like a, it says that uh, God is uh, closer you from, closer more than everything. Everyone has their own path to God. There can be no middleman on the way to God, because only angel or archangel can be as a mediator, who may give us the knowledge, open the road, but person has to follow this road, this path himself, by own efforts. For me, it's God is some uh, strength. It's, he is not man or he is not woman. It's like strength. Uh, uh, God exists and I believe in it one million percent, okay? Because we can't see Him, yes, but we can feel Him. But existence of God, He can show it to you by another meanings. I don't go to church every weekend, I confess, but I believe I have my own relationship um, with, with God. I think everyone does. I think invest in your own relationship with, with God. I think that the church is only a building and you could have positive and negative people over there as well. But the main issue for me is to believe in a God who is looking after you. Because nowadays people are coming to church, mosque and asking a Shay, Shay, help me. No, he is closer. Ask him. Why do you need a middleman? If he is closer, if he can hear you, he can see you, he is feeling you, he knows the intention in your heart, he knows it, and we believe in it. This is Surah from the Quran. He knows what is in your hearts. 
It means the intention. Boy is spiritual. We can't see him. We don't need a middleman to talk to God. Simply main thing is to believe with all your soul. It's not necessary to go to church every day to prove that you're a true believer. If it's in your heart, then everything is fine. I really believe that God being one and God is the spirit and kind of that his spirit is everywhere. That's why, you know, there's beautiful things in life that happen all over. And I think that's why it's, it can happen anywhere. And that's why he is everywhere. I'm Roman Catholic, but I haven't gone to church every Sunday. But it's it's different now, you know, is there different times? But that's the thing, I don't believe that you there should be a middleman. I don't think uh, you should have to go to church, you know, to speak to him. I think that's why when they say God is the spirit, God is everywhere. That... I think that we all are independent people. And we should not create any doctrines, believe in something, because it's something greater. I don't know how to explain, but I know how to feel. Don't think that we should elevate anyone. Eventually, we will owe them something. Every person is responsible for their own choice, and no middleman can help in anything. The role of these intermediaries, frankly, is to get our money on behalf of the religion, saying that it's for God. The holiest place for God is my heart. Not to say I am in the God's heart, no. God should be in my heart. Institutions, individuals that will try and manipulate mm -hmm. religion to serve their own gain. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, people like that exist everywhere. It can't be helped. But I think with religion, I actually believe that people need to um, accept and understand that they have their own relationship with God. That's, for me, the fundamental. So you can be Muslim, you can be Christian, you can be a different branch, Jewish, whatever your choice is. But I would say to you, necessarily, don't follow the man at the top. The man at the top is God, and you have your own relationship with God, and that's personal to you. You don't need the man at the top to tell you that that's wrong and this is right. The Russian word for religion is deen, or avastha daina. Daina comes from the Indo-Aryan root Ni, to see, and it implies to see within oneself, in other words, to introspect. This brings us to that very important um, Vedic and Iranian teaching, that the wealth of information and knowledge is already there sitting within us, and we have to go within, see within, look within, introspect and search within. So the word Daina or Deen for religion means to look within and find the answer. Every sensible person understands that first of all we need to find inner peace inside us. Only within oneself, a person can realize and understand the real aim of one's life in this world. I think we don't need any escort on this path who would say that only if you follow certain laws, for example, Kashrut or Judaism or laws of Islam or other religious laws, you will be able to reach your goal. One can only come to God and one's own inside himself. Allah is uh, beyond even our uh, our logics. In Quran, there is uh, which is mean that if people ask you ask about Allah, you just say, have to say that uh, he's close and he's listening to the prayer. So there is no connection between you and Allah. It's the one of the very beautiful thing like in life, if you need to do something, if you want to get to a big uh, manager in one company and all, you need many connections. You need to find someone to guide you, to, to link you with this one, and then until you reach to that uh, person. But with Allah, it's not like that. It's just between you and them. I don't need to anybody say me that... Do that, do that, do that yes. anything. So yes. It's only my opinion and my... No, your, your choice, your my, my choice. I don't think there should be a third person being this. 
because that is just between him and me. You're right. This is very personal, right? Yes, exactly. You know, there's no boundary or somebody between you and God. It's just this, this like private relationship of you and God. A person should understand what is his path in his life, what is his spiritual development. We are all part of God. Oh, I try to have a direct relation with mm -hmm. We don't need any middlemen. God is everywhere. He is here and now. That's why I, all of us, don't need any mediators to contact Him. Should be just a desire to listen. No, nobody can control with me, with my, my feeling about God. Well, actually, if you just believe the God, there is God. We don't need any guide, we don't need any reference, or we don't need anybody to make the connection between the God and us. So I don't believe that. So if there is God, I believe it. I know myself. Thank you. I often read the Bible. I like its connection to other relevant spiritual sources. Religion is important for me as possibility of spiritual liberation. And the religious knowledge base should give person the possibility to choose. I cannot speak for all religions. I can only speak for Islam, as it is my religion, and I know and understand it very well. There is no middleman between you and God. Every person can talk to God. Have one God and all the religions that uh, choose one thing and we should live in the peace, for example, as Jesus said, as Prophet, our Prophet Muhammad said like this. Spirit controls mind, because when one doesn't feel spirit in his heart, nothing is clear in mind. First of all, the feeling inside, and only then, thoughts and mind. No middleman is needed. It is enough to love Allah with pure heart and conscience inside, in a feeling of happiness, without any fear. Everyone, first of all, being honest with himself, with clear soul, in doing the right things, can reach Allah. This is the biggest happiness. This is the path of every man. Everyone can come to God themselves. This can be a desire that has awakened in him. I want something else. Not all this, I want something more something sincere, something which is missing out here. God is inside of us, and it is our conscience. He tells us what is good and what is bad, but each person decides for themselves what to choose. Nevertheless, many of us are feeling it inside. Their spiritual spark, and we are drawn towards this world. I feel it. When you are one with God, you are already a spirit, but still a human. Because a human is made out of blood and flesh, but God is a spirit. Here and now I can feel Him. God is spiritual. Really, we cannot see God. He is the Creator. He is a spirit. And Jesus Christ said, there will be time when true believers will love me in spirit and in truth. We no longer need prayers like but in truth and spirit, you know. This is because God is the Spirit, and those who want to talk to God must be in the Spirit. God only speaks to a Spirit. God will not come to you like a person to talk to you. He only speaks to a Spirit and in a Spirit. Because Jesus said that if I stay here, you will not find the truth, but I will return to our Father and I will not leave you alone. Our Father will send a Holy Spirit who will lead you to the truth. Therefore, He is a Spirit. Messiahs had brought us messages from God, but religious servants, except some of them, often don't deserve their title. You can't trust them when they are teaching people or explain the sacred writings. There are various religions and various rituals, but it only shows that people express their beliefs in God differently. The most important is to believe in the Creator. Being a Muslim doesn't stop me from getting to know people of other nationalities and religions. 
It doesn't matter to me what religion a person follows. You cannot judge a person based on his or her religion. God is everywhere, no matter where you go, because He is everywhere and beyond time. If you close your eyes and withdraw from the outside, you will be able to find Him. God is inside the person and you can feel Him. I feel God in every day, like the fact that I that I'm able to arise from my sleep is a blessing from God. The fact that I'm able to live every day is like a blessing from God. So I experience him through the blessings and experiences of my life. And I know that he's been there throughout my life and guided me the right way. I don't need a middleman. The search for God is in every one of us. It is a very personal search. I believe that God is love. This positive energy is what we call God. You don't, you don't need to go to church or to uh, some other place in order to believe in God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this inner faith, I think it just leads you through the life. You reach to God yourself. You don't. You can't have somebody else act like an in intermediate between you and God. It's something between you and God. There shouldn't be any middleman in between. Religion and business is actually need money for wantage, I should say, for big buildings, big churches. Everything they need or want themselves. But God doesn't want that money. He would prefer if everybody on earth would look that. It seems to be every religion. Oh, use a priest or somebody as a mediator for them to talk to God. Nonsense. No. You can talk to God yourself. You don't have to even move your mouth. You can speak them in your mind. Their job is a priest or minister or whatever you call it from different religions. But their role is just to teach us about God and the love of God. Not to get money for requesting things from God for us. That's not really what I believe in. I believe in we can talk to God ourselves. He created us, every one of us. And he gave us free will. If we use that properly, he gave it us for good. But a lot of people don't use it properly, so they think you can do what they like. And they don't believe that they're doing any harm to anybody because they're just interested in making money for themselves or getting power for themselves. Which, uh, that's just human nature, I suppose. You could use the free will that God gave to drop it. Now, God didn't create those religions. Man created them. And suddenly, there's loads of rules we, we must live by. You can't do this, you should not do that. And there's penalties for doing it if you do wrong. Now, God never taught us that. He taught us love. But I'm not saying now that you can't be guided by somebody. That's different. But not ruled by that. So you still make your own decision that way. It's a matter of people live in different countries and they follow different religions. But if you find out that most religions are based on the same thing to love God and love our fellow human beings, our fellow men as well. And it doesn't matter what you call God, different religions call God different names, but it is the same God. It's like we're all traveling in the one direction. Just up on different I hope one day people just take the limitation out of their minds because at the end of the thing it's all in our minds that... So I think most people in reality realize that all these, all these divisions are artificial um, and they can, only, they can only exist if we believe in such a concept. Um, so any differences we have are very small if you compare to the things that make us similar. Um, so whether, you're, whether you believe in one faith or another faith, or that, that, that's, at least for me, is small information. We, we share so much in common. We all can see what unites us all, which is our pure nature. We're pure by nature, and all the afflictions are coming from our mind.
It is up to us to control our mind. And we need to start from ourselves. Many people are searching for God in churches, in nature. They make a pilgrimage and are looking all around them. But they will never try to find it within. And those who are looking for God outside, they are really looking for Satan. They are going to Satan. When I find God within myself, then I can find Him anywhere, even in churches. Truly, God's kingdom is everywhere. And only through the heart, through the inner, one can reach God. I have also searched for a long time and realized that everything starts within me. The true grain of the truth that is one for all. To find God, one doesn't need any middleman, one only needs to love Him within. And this can be done by any human of any religion. Just like I have a soul, you have a soul, they have a soul. So all souls are equal. All souls are capable of going there. Nobody can save your soul except you. It doesn't matter which religion or which form. So regardless of the artificial boundaries that are set by maybe different religions or right. countries or... Right. Everyone, each and every soul is capable of achieving that. Yeah. No, religion is the one we want to bring. But the religion makes all the fight. Uh, everybody fighting because of religion. If I respect somebody, whether they follow same or not, doesn't matter. But if I show some appreciation and love, so that's going to unite whether you have same thinking or not. Doesn't matter. At least you are just giving them love. You are treating them with respect, with love. And everybody is looking for love, no matter what you do. Everyone is looking for love, being treated like a being. That's what everyone is looking for. So when we unite, that's the only time we can do it. That's the only time we can have friendship. God is closest to us. He is closer to us than we think, closer than carotid artery. We don't need a middleman. God can hear everything that is on our mind and what we are going to do. God knows about everything. A leaf won't fall from a tree without God's will. Everyone is equal before God. Every person will answer to God for his deeds. Everyone will be held accountable for their actions. That is why you don't need a middleman between God and a person. A person that is wishing for happiness must stand on the path of serving Allah without any middleman. Human consciousness becomes such a middleman that forces to search outside instead of finding the answers inside. For example, to create idol for oneself or to pass the buck to another person for my spiritual growth. But even while investigating the scientists' work or talking to other people, we understand that the only way is the way of feeling. It is the way of inner elatra that unites each person. Yes, there are a lot of distinctions, a lot of rituals, different ceremonies in cultures and so on, but we all have one common, our inner. All people have the same soul. To be exact, everyone has a soul. Feeling your soul, the way it exists in us, is the same for everyone. Unification is always possible. And to be honest, we are already united. The chance to unite is always there. It never vanished. The only thing is, we are a little bit different and our consciousness divides us and lack of love. There is an understanding of love and the common understanding that virtue is achieved only through love. Allah had put love in our hearts 
That love that we must learn is deep inside us, and therefore we must find it in our hearts, the love to Allah. Only then Allah will guide us, because none of the people, even priests, no one can guide a person to God if that person doesn't open his heart. Open heart is the best postulate, and it is the first step towards God. Religious preferences should not be a reason for confrontation. Every person should build his relationship with God the way he can, the way he wants, and in accordance with his conscience. Not religious preferences, not the way a person addresses God, not the way a person prays to God should unite or divide people, but the human relationship between people, perception of everyone as a personality, the ability to see a part of God in everyone. It has been said in all religion, the basic thing, you have one God. They have said there is only one God. If there is one God, so we, we naturally we are children of that God. Yes. We are children. So we are all same. It, it doesn't matter we are different color or different religion. We are just bound by the religion. Yes. We should step out and we have to think who we really are. Once you know that who you really are, then there is no individuality. Exactly. We are one family, right? You have one family. Uh, you cannot say, actually, the saying is different than realizing. Mm -hmm. If you realize that you are actually one, it's not has been said if somebody said that we are one. We will not believe because we haven't had any experience. Unless you have an experience exactly. that you are one really, where, is, where it is one. I don't think we need a middleman to God. You know, if you have the Holy Spirit, once you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need any other person than the Holy Spirit. You communicate through the Holy Spirit. You don't, the Holy Spirit himself communicates through us to God. So when you have a true relationship with the Holy Spirit, automatically you have a relationship with God. So I don't need any other person to tell me, oh, God is saying this, when I can actually hear by myself. So I don't need a middleman. Wherever we are, in our rooms, in our private conversations, every other thing we do, we can converse with God personally and God will hear us and He also, also speaks to us. That's another thing. We need to listen to Him. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. We need a special time. We need a private time to listen to God. If you have, if you devote, God speaks to us in so many ways. Even when we are in class, in the midst of many voices, we still hear Him. All these universal grains of truth found all over the world by the participants of the project The Universal Grain are being confirmed by scientists from different spheres of knowledge. Welcome to our TV, Dr. Gandhi. Thank you very much. I see everybody. Okay, perfect, perfect. We, we can continue. <laughs> yes. Let me read a quotation from the book Alatra. Um, in the book it says that the battlefield of good and evil is, first of all, a human mind. Do you agree that all wars of good and evil, first of all, starts in our head? Yes, it is. We are constantly faced with this challenge every day of our life between making the right choices, mm -hmm. uh, between good and evil, or between good and bad, or whatever. And if we don't learn to make the right choices, then we end up doing the wrong thing. So it is very important that we learn, and that can happen only if we have that control over the mind. I think if all of us, the only values that are important are love, respect, understanding, appreciation. And if we allow that positive uh, values to dominate our thinking and our attitudes, uh, we will be very different people. And uh, how important is it for all people to know about um, common spiritual grains in all religions which align in the basis of all spiritual teachings? I think it's uh, all religions are ultimately based on love, understanding, respect, 
and the appreciation of people of humanity. And my, you know, my grandfather used to say that religion is like climbing a mountain. We are ultimately all going to the same peak. So why should it matter to anybody which side of the mountain we choose to climb and walk from? All of us are in search of truth, the ultimate truth. Mm -hmm. So universal brain for all religions is, first of all, love, right? Absolutely. Love and respect and understanding. And so what we need to do is forget those divisions and try to cement each other and come closer together. I am frequently asked in my life, as a psychologist, how do I understand the notion, destiny? I answer in such a way, yes, God is the creator, but it is the human who makes their destiny. In other words, if there is a choice to do good or not to do good, then one should always make a choice to create good. In everyday life, in global questions, everything leads us to the choice the decision of what to do in this or that situation, how to feel that you get God's way. Perhaps we should listen to our inner state. All humans feel what is going on within them. Everyone has this inner indicator that shows whether we do something right or not, how to act, whether people tell the truth or not. Only a human can see the sparkle of love, or, unfortunately, a sparkle of lie in one's words. What do you mean by the notion, be with God? This is right, what we were talking about before, to be on the side of the truth, justness and love, which is God. Not everything that looks black in the human world is black. And not everything that seems to be white is white. The perception of the color depends on the inward feeling. The purer the soul is, the more often a human sees true colors of this world. And the more he grows spiritually, the more he realizes what this world is in fact. More than philosophy, it is the behavior, it is the practice, doing of the thing is more important than what we speak or what we preach because there is always a duality between what we speak or what we preach and what we do. That religion was different uh, from the uh, religiosity which we call the, the ritual aspect. Spirituality was uh, more the inner aspects that how, because by rituals improve the outer world. But what for inside? What if we are not good from inside? It should not come out in our act. So, a spirituality, in that sense, we could say that it is related with the spirit. You want so much to be with that eternal source of energy and realizing that whatever your wants and needs are, are not important. And I think it's necessary for us to realize that all religions and all people are on the same, on, on a path to God. And as a Zoroastrian, it is trying to just find what is common in us because there will always be differences and there will always be someone who sees that difference. And it is much better for us to understand that everybody is at a different place. Wherever they are, not, it's not better or worse, we're just different. And we're all moving and we all have the same purpose. And if we have to see that as a common goal, we're all moving towards God. And I think that is um, something that people should really learn to do. Each person reaches faith in his own unique way. And from this point of view, we may say that every human takes his own way towards faith and God. There is no common path or guide. Everyone comes alone. And the desire to gain spirituality, to find spiritual fundamentals for people and society, this is the main purpose. We have certain knowledge about good and evil. And simply as people, we know how to distinguish them. What is really good and good for all. 
It seems that we really have access to this, that there is an open channel that goes directly into our conscience, soul. And when I do something really good, my conscience, soul, protects me. Every human has some sense of morality from birth. It may differ among cultures. I believe, if to research it, what you are currently doing now, and I'm eager to find out your results. And that is an important dimension, I think, for a society to be able to hold together. So the, the fabric of the society, I say, is, is very strong in terms of a movement towards unity, interact with people on a humane basis. You, you see people as humans, first of all, before you see the color of their skin and, and, and other things, right? From the point of view of religious science, initially everything was united. Then there were people responsible for different branches of human activity. Knowledge was differentiated, and it was differentiated into philosophy, law, morality, politics, religion, science, art. Of course, people have much in common. People have values. What actually distinguishes human from the animal world, obviously first and foremost, are these values. We have something that we call religion. Religion and spirituality are not the same thing. Because religions can differ while something that we call spirituality exists independently of us. We also call it Brahma in Hinduism, but it has different names, and we need to find something in common. We must resonate with God. We always must attempt to resonate with God. Attempts to find His praise. This idea exists in every faith, and every religion. The core is always in this. And this is what unites us, that we are all people, and that we have our soul, the sparkle of God, that is given to people. In other words, the spiritual world also unites us. That is why one who believes is always on the right way, regardless the religion, Hinduism, Krishnaism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, Eastern Orthodox, Slavic native faith, other faith. The faith given by God will lead the person along the path to the unity with God. A person makes his choice out of the series of advice and clues. The person bears the full responsibility, and first of all, eternal life of his soul depends on it. Either it will stay in suffering, or will gain reward for its actions. Everything exists for some benefit. There is no a single thing from which benefit can't be reaped. And how about a human? exactly what it is with the human. His purpose or mission is to reflect, or how it's said, to be the Imago Dei, to be an image of God. And this, even if it sounds archaic, is the most noble mission which the human may have. To be such a creation, my own nature to reflect the greatest possible goodness, truth and beauty. And our dear Mahatma Gandhi also said that be the change that you want to see. So I firmly believe that we have to look inward and see how best we can be. And as human beings, we are not animals, you know, as human beings, we have to be different. That is one, I think, common grain that all human beings have. First of all, the faculty of thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. So why should we behave like animals? We're different. And that is never to be lost sight of. We should never forget that we are not animals, we are human beings. And I think people must remember that they are here for something else, you know, something beyond this beyond this world. In reality, a human being is free only in his choice. He is not free from thoughts. 
because his consciousness, the observer, does not actually produce them. He only chooses between two flows, thoughts and stimuli from the spiritual nature, his will, or thoughts and desires from the animal mind, his will. That is, the person can choose the will which he liked or which has tempted him and apply to it the power of his attention, which begets action. This is precisely the key moment of the human choice. From Alatra by Anastasia Novak. Indeed, there are roots of good and evil inside us. It depends on our actions, whether goodness will be increased in the world, or it will be reduced and more evil will appear. Some inner feeling is guiding us, we may call it high morality, moral intuition, or however we like, but we can feel it. That's why we either rely on some doctrines, which are based on religious and metaphysical premises, or trust our inner feeling, the feeling of conscience. There are lines of one nice song. The conscience is a moral category which lets us unmistakably define and distinguish good from evil. I think it's very important that we understand who we are and what we are and why are we here on Earth. So it's a personal uh, transformation that has to take place uh, by our own efforts. And like the Buddhists say, our mind is like a monkey jumping around in the tree from here to the left. That we need to have control over our mind. We are not here to live from birth to death. We are here for a purpose. We need to be human beings. Whatever our color and shape or beliefs may be, we are all human beings. We are all here together to do something you know, together. We are spiritual beings. We are not just a matter, body. And this body lives because of soul. The human has an ability, or need, literally, to feel something that is exceeding, greater than he is. You don't need any additional moments, you don't need any material resources for this. You just need to concentrate on your inner world. What bothers me, what I would like to change, and change it right now. For example, you are in a shuttle bus, and somebody pushed you. It is not pleasant. The first idea that comes is to turn around and say, why are you pushing me? Immediately with negative emotion. And at this moment you need to catch this moment when you thought that something should be done in another way, and you came home and thinking, I should have acted and said differently. So you should have. Catch that moment when it is at the peak, when you want to turn around and say something bad. Catch this moment, and here, look inside yourself, to analyze. The world is so big that everything is possible. Even one who seemed not able to change can change. And path to God, it is just the same. This is the spiritual work that needs to be done. But the initial impulse goes not from the consciousness, but from something different. From something different, yes. This means that it is not the mind that tells the human how to act, but something different. This is conscience, our soul. In this very moment of cultivation, of this seed inside, the desire to change something, to become closer to God, this path to God. What is my way to reach God? God is invisible, there is no guide in life. See, the more you look into the basics, the more united we are in the world. Everybody is seeing exactly the same thing, that's how I address the problem of God. So we call them with different names, but everybody is saying the same thing. Do you, what is good for your fellow beings to not hurt anybody? And you know, um, that's, that's basic philosophy of any culture, whether it's Islam, Christianity, or Hinduism, Parsi, anywhere. So from that perspective, it is one. Each of us has common values. One common view of life is to make the world a better place. 
For example, if you help one person when he is in trouble, it will make you happy. And you are happy not because you help, but because the world was filled with kindness and love. And that's why you are happy. These are values of feelings. When you share kindness and love, when the good of human hearts is released outward. The participants of the Universal Grain Project have researched how in the primary sources of different cultures of the world are reflected such notions as human choice between black and white, where a grey doesn't exist, the choice of a human, of his way in life, whom to serve, God or devil, and the most important choice of a human that takes place not at the level of consciousness, but at the level of feelings. There is one very touching moment in the program — consciousness and personality, from the inevitably dead to the eternally alive, that caused a vivid response in me. It is about the fact that a human was created twice, and if we take Zoroastrianism, the first spiritual creatures, Ravashi, choose to be incarnated in the material world to confront the evil and stand for the good. Here in Zoroastrianism it is well said that they made a decision. I emphasize, people decided to oppose evil while in the body, meaning to gain materiality. Yes, this legend is mentioned in the sacred books of Zoroastrianism, that at one time God asked people whether He should protect them from Ariman, or if they themselves, already in a corporal shell, in a corporal form, can fight and defeat Him, after which they will become immortal. And people chose the latter. This is the choice of the people themselves. They wanted to oppose Ariman while in bodies, to begin under his rule, to begin with duality. This is such a serious choice, so that it is not little angels, but angels that would come to the spiritual world. It was brought into the material world, where people were born, developed, and then consciously chosen that they needed to go to the spiritual world. In Pallavi, Fravahar means pre-choice. So Fravashi, those first spiritual beings, before incarnation in the material world, made their first choice to be incarnated here, in the material world. By their own choice, they decided to become mature beings. They came here, into this hell, to defend the positions of the spiritual world, so that here, by making a choice at every moment, consciously to come to God, to deserve His love. And now people have to make only one choice — to serve God, at every moment to defend this choice, choice of the spiritual inside oneself. After watching the movie Consciousness and Personality, I have this understanding now. As for me, choice, was something to choose between certain types of things for myself, kind of one action to choose. For example, to choose a cloth and put it on. But here, choice in the spiritual concept is when you choose, uh, as you mentioned, you have to constantly uh, keep on choosing, keep going with your choice. It's not like one action. It's an action that has to be continuously continued. Thanks to this movie, I have practiced it. In Zoroastrianism, one can also find mentions of the fact that a human comes to God, a human comes to Ahura Mazda, not by being passive, not only contemplating. He combines within himself good thoughts, good words and good deeds. In other words, a person acts, and what actions can be performed exactly by inner feelings? Aspiration to this feeling that lives inside every human, that is present in him initially, that is his real essence, and to choose this in every single moment. And what is choice in the Zoroastrian culture? Choice in Zoroastrianism is not um, that is a one-time event. It is actually an endless process that began from the beginning of time and it will end at the end of time when you finally merge back into our master. 
So don't completely rely on our mind to make a conscious choice. And it is interrupted or corrupted with the sense of self. So we can be inter intercepted by our the thoughts that are floating around in our aura. So how does one pick that choice now? Because now we're, our mind is confused, our conscience gets, uh, the messages get uh, distracted. So again, I'm going to say that here it is necessary for a human being to follow their entire life should be a prayer to God. The main choice that human makes in life is the choice of good. Yes, but what is good? We go through the divine intervention or the communication increases. Then we under, begin to understand that there's, the only thing that's good is a movement of the soul towards our master, towards the path of re reuniting with God. Whereas that is something that takes us away from that path. So the path, and it's of truth, you can either move up towards truth or you can start moving backwards and go towards lie. So it's not too so one can recognize that good is a movement towards God. The purpose of our existence, in a way, according to Zoroastrian religion, is to know, understand, and identify what is good, to know, understand, and identify what is evil. And even according to Zoroastrian religion, is a parasite. So if you don't support it, it will die down by itself. Just by being good, you will not support evil. And so evil will have no way to live or stand and die by itself. Calming the mind is very necessary to tap, to, uh, tap the inner wisdom. You only if your mind is quiet, will your inner voice speak. Man has been given several faculties which help him to deal with this good and evil. And one of the most important faculties is called the Urvan, um, which in later language came to be known as Ravan. And in English it is generally translated as the soul. The word Urvan comes from the word Var, which means to choose. So, the whole idea is that the soul has to make a choice by, uh, between good and evil. But in order to make the choice, it needs to have knowledge about what is good and what is evil. So, uh, that choice the soul makes. And so, whether to suffer in this world and the afterworld, that is the choice that the soul has to make, the Urvan has to make. And that's why the very meaning of the word Urvan is the chooser. One who chooses. Pravashi. It is the Pravashi is not the chooser because Pravashi knows. It is the totally pure spiritual part of God which has been given to us. While studying these texts, you realize that initially people had knowledge about good and evil, that is, the knowledge about two opposites between which a person made his deliberate choice. So instead of moving towards something, words fra means moving towards something. So I would say fra varana mazdi asno sartushri. So I am on the path of mazda worship. Mazda meaning light. Fra will have different meanings as a person moves forward, but definitely the, the main thing is that it's moving towards our mazda and we wish to move towards God. I think that is the main concept here. As evidence of this, there is such Fravarana text. For example, lines, Holy Armaiti, the good I choose for myself. In Zoroastrianism, Armaiti means godliness and kindness, one of the hypostases of Ahura Mazda. Or such lines, I reject the authority of the devas, the wicked, no good, lawless, evil knowing. We see that people knew what they did reject and what to choose between. Here lines, I pledge myself to the well-thought thought, I pledge myself to the well-spoken word, I pledge myself to the well-done action. According to Avesta, this principle sounds like a good thought, a good word, a good deed, and they are considered for us, for Zoroastrians, very important. These three levels needed by person to manifest himself. Basically, the entire space battle depends on the choice of each person. This question about the life on the Earth is crucial. It can be resolved only with the light spirit. If we listen to the forces of darkness, then, as a result, the last human will bury himself here.
if all of us will choose to make the right choice, then for sure the world will be saved. There are also such touching lines that belong to researcher of Zoroastrianism Mary Boyce, who says such words about the symbol of faith in Zoroastrianism, Fravarane. She wrote, by choosing the good, each individual is aligning himself as a humble fellow worker with God and the whole Pentecosmos. Generally, Zoroastrians perceive it like this, that the world is made by the Creator. He made our world Himself. He is called His main name is Ahura Mazda. Ahura Mazda is translated as the spirit of wisdom. This definition means that he is a spirit, it's a spiritual being. And wisdom is that adjective which is related to the world of light, the world of kindness. It is believed that dark nature can be powerful, it can be intelligent, but at the end it doesn't possess this wisdom. It is interesting that in Gats there is the Yasna number 13. It is called Yasna of Choice. It tells us about the good spirit and evil spirit, about the fact that a human is free to choose between these two spirits. It is said there, hear with your ears the best things, look upon them with clear seeing soul, for the decision between the two beliefs, each man for himself before the great consummation, bethinking you that it be accomplished to our pleasure. The translation made by Kamensky sounds in the following way, do you listen with your own ears, do you look with the best inspiring divine intelligence at the creed of your own choice, each man for himself in order to instruct himself through our sages before the magnificent events. Here are two faiths. As we know, there are two spirits, Spenta Manu and Anger Manu, and a human is free to choose between these two spirits, and between that which they offer. It is also said that when these two spirits gathered for the first time, they created life and death, and between them, the faithful ones distinguished and chose good and kindness while sinners chose exactly what the evil spirit offered. You have read a very important fragment from the Gathas of Zarathustra, Yasna 30, where it is explained about these two spirits. The spirit, which became a spirit of evil, Angra Maino, chose darkness, and the second spirit chose the principle of creation, love and creativity, and became Ahura Mazda, and created our world. In today's life, nowadays, every person goes through life and meets different situations. There is a possibility to act from the position of light, to create, to do something for the good of others. And there is something from Angra Mainu, these evil spirits, which whisper something in your ear. So the battle is going on inside him, in his soul, in his heart, which side he will choose. And here we see again that there is only black and white. There is no gray, something third does not exist. And it becomes clear why people were initially given the knowledge about good and bad the opposite side, because a human was able to understand that he makes this choice, not simply now, but the choice he makes at this very moment remains with him forever. In other words, if he chooses to serve Ariman, then this choice remains with him forever. And if he chooses to serve the One God, it is Ahura Mazda and Zoroastrianism, then he gets the eternal life and becomes a part of one God. And really, this is indeed fair. This is the supreme fairness and the highest degree of person's freedom. He can choose whom to serve. He can choose death, service to Satan, and an illusion of importance. Or he can become an angel, meaning an immortal being, equal one among equals, an integral part of the world of God. After all, it is interesting and it is fair. We can observe information about the duality of a human being in many religions and that each person in reality chooses between good and evil during all his life and is responsible for each thought, each action performed. In other words, a human chooses his way. This is the way that either leads to the spiritual liberation or the way that leads to death. I have found interesting moments in Buddhism that clearly show that a human needs to make a choice, that there is only black and white, that there is no grey. There are such words in Sutta Nipata, having himself undertaken some holy works, he goes to various things led by his senses. 
But a man of great understanding, a wise man, who by his wisdom has understood the Dharma, does not go to various occupations. Dharma is the closest correlation with the word truth, satya, merit, punya, and blessing. We see that the word svadharma means my way to God, individual spiritual path, individual life, personal choice to live in one's true nature. And what is the true nature of a human? This is spiritual nature. It is the choice of the personality. In other words, it is my choice. My dharma is what I choose. There is a uh, story, Mahabharata, and uh, character Vishnu. He preached uh, to his uh, nephew that in every person there comes a situation where we have to choose our religion. That means religion was an individual thing for the Indians. Which is individual like uh, personal experience. Yeah, it is more of personal experience. And it is about the way we conduct ourselves. I found some great books in their library. And now I'd like to quote from one of the books. No one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. Buddhas merrily teach the way. By ourselves is evil done. By ourselves we pain endure. By ourselves we cease from wrong. By ourselves become we pure. In this important Buddhist text called Hamapada, we can clearly see the fact that everything is about our choice, and we are choosing our destiny ourselves. Alatra book also gives us a very good understanding about human choice. The person's path to God is individual for everyone. It is a personal fight and the entire life path. No one can pass this path in your place. This is your battle with your negative qualities and striving in each day, in each moment throughout your life, to make yourself better. Well, how can anyone else do this in my place? It's possible that another person can share his experience with me. I can get some knowledge from another person, but my path is only mine. Nobody else can do it for me. The path is absolutely different for each person, and one cannot foresee it. One can only travel this path. I personally have such feeling that I have all these religions united inside of me. And simply, intuitively, walking along the way to God, the way which I find by my feeling. Therefore, if a human really has this desire, he will definitely do it. He will reach God. He will be good. It depends only on the desire of oneself. Any person, sooner or later, gains this self-dependence in attainment of Almighty God. Such statement as the one who walks towards enlightenment by himself is also very interesting. It can be found in many places of Lotus Sutra or Sutra of the Lotus Flower of Marvelous Tama. For example, this phrase can be found in such words to those who have married, have paid homage to the Buddhas and seek the excellent Tama. They teach the ideal of the Pratyeka Buddha. Or, after my Parinivana, there will be disciples who will not hear this sutra and will neither know nor understand the Bodhisattva practice. Yet, through the merit they have acquired, the thought of extinction will awaken them, and they will enter Parinivana. This saying shows us that one doesn't need any middleman to reach the other world, to reach the Enlightenment. Everyone can do it himself. In one of the books from the huge collection of Tribhutaka, there is a chapter about the aim of life, of a human being, and the need to distinguish between core of the phenomenon and the act of choice. What is its reward? Concentration has knowledge and vision of things as they actually are, as its purpose. Knowledge and vision of things as they actually are, as its reward. Dispassion has knowledge and vision of release as its purpose. Knowledge and vision of release as its reward. 
Thus, in this way, anada, skillful virtues, have freedom from remorse as their purpose. This quote contains words that state the need and the importance of the concentration of human attention. In other words, human attention is something very important. There are such words in the book Alatra, attention is the beginning of creation. Attention plays a very important role in life of every human, where one puts his attention into good deeds and thoughts or into bad. By that one creates his life or death. One of the significant moments is that we can frequently see the allusions in the text of scriptures that one needs to be in joyfulness to save oneself. For example, there are such words, raise the great joyfulness in your hearts and be aware that you will become Buddhas. The participants of the film Consciousness and Personality, from the inevitably dead to the eternally alive, often mention that the Holy Spirit raises joyfulness inside. Why the Holy Spirit? Because one feels joy, holiness, holy day. There are also grains revealing the topic of the choice in the Jainism religion. In the Holy Scripture, Samayasara, for example, chapter 3, Shloka 23. The soul itself is the casual agent of whatever impure modifications it undergoes. Chapter 3, Shloka 34. Of whatever psychic disposition, good or bad, the self is produced, he is certainly the substantive cause. That disposition becomes his karma or action, and the self enjoys the fruits thereof. Chapter 3, Shloka, 58. Whatever psychic mode the soul manifests itself into, it is the casual agent of that mode. Chapter 8, Shloka, 32. The self, due to his dispositions, identifies himself with various states of existence, subhuman, plants and animals, infernal, celestial and human beings, and various kinds of bondages involving merit and demerit. In Alatra, the Encyclopedia of the Primordial Knowledge, there are such words. By paying attention to certain information, one creates one's subsequent destiny with his choice. By giving the power of his attention to such information, he in fact gives life to the program contained therein, which is what transforms his life into one or another reality. Ask and then uh, also I'm curious because we were here before and um, we did see a lot of the things that are very similar to uh, unorthodox and very similar even to uh, my religion as well. So I would like to ask you about that as well. You ask about your God. Do you believe in God? Our scripture says we all are worthy to become a God. And those people who ultimately Shred all their karmas, it will become completely pure. Instead of with nothing were left. And when anybody reaches to that stage, soul is the only one which basically survives. We call it eternal. It never dies. Body so, dies alive. Our belief is that every soul is capable of achieving salvation. Anybody can. Anybody oh, can go. As long as the, there are many paths, many ways to go there, you will reach it. So other religion person can reach there also. Yeah, you, you can also reach to this point too. Anyway. As long as you can shred all your karma, so your mind, your thinking, everything is positive and follow certain those paths, then you can also achieve this point too. Okay, very good. So anybody can. Yeah. Yes. And you know that yeah, all doesn't knowledge have... is in the soul. It is just covered with this karma. Mind plays a big part in it. You might be not saying anything, but you might be thinking. So that is so also bad. You are inviting all that karma to your soul. So anything, the it's, words, thoughts. So anything. only your soul knows what you are doing. No one else really knows. So there is no creator, no protector, no destroyer. That's it's you only. only. You do to yourself what you do to what happens to you that's you only God is yourself. You can't blame anybody else, right? You can only you're the only one that's capable of saving yourself. Okay. That's very good. Very good. Chapter 9, Shloka 1 and 2. A man bound in shackles for a long time knows the nature of his bondage. 
intense or feeble, and also its duration. He cannot get rid of the bondage till the time he is able to break the shackles. In other words, there is a universal grain in each religious scriptures. The universal grain that shows that the human being has the choice, the freedom of choice, about the fact that a human chooses between a spiritual and the animal nature. Also, there are such words in Alatra. Matter is mortal, but the soul is immortal. The personality has freedom of choice, whether to become mortal or to live for eternity. This is the whole point, and everything must grow from here. The ancient source of the Hindu religion, Katha Upanishad, also speaks about the human choice. The first part, second song, one is good while another is pleasant. These two, serving different ends, bind men. Happiness comes to him, who of these chooses the good, who chooses the pleasant forfeits the true end. Both the good and the pleasant approach the mortal, the intelligent man examines and distinguishes them. For the intelligent man prefers the good to the pleasant, the ignorant man chooses the pleasant for the sake of his body. There is a choice to make between temporary, what we can see, can touch, can get, and that what is inside, which we can feel. This is a very interesting moment to choose good. As the greatest good is God, this inner feeling. These two are wide apart, mutually exclusive, leading to different ways known as ignorance and knowledge. In Kadha Upanishad, in the same verse, it is said that the path that leads to self-realization is comprehended by the true I. The true I is thinner than the atom and above any thought. This sacred knowledge cannot be reached by reasoning. Earth's values are not permanent, but the true essence cannot be achieved by using non-permanent things. But I brought, in constant sacrifice, the fire of Nachiketas and achieved this true essence. The topic of choice is really shown that people knew that it is possible to comprehend only by feelings and that a person really has to make his choice coming into this life. As well in Bhagavad Gita, there is such a verse. With the self unattached to the external contacts, he discovers happiness in the self. With the self engaged in the meditation of Brahman, he attains to the endless happiness. If to look at the words engaged in the meditation of Brahman, it means yuktatma, in the unity. If to see further, the word yukta has such meanings as connected, determined, firm in actions. Constant in his own choice. Yes. Very interesting that ancient understanding about the deepest feelings and human's choice was imparted metaphorically. For example, in Indo-European mythology there is a concept of Indra. As we have read in Alatra book, it was indicating the deepest feelings of a person, spiritual power in him. I would like to read this quote, very interesting. Translated from ancient Indian, the root of the word Indra means an indication of spiritual power. Interestingly, it is mentioned that the ability to have many forms is inherent to this god, and that it can turn into a horse hair. Indra himself appears in myths as the god of heaven who is connected with rain, water, who releases rivers and streams, and pierces channels, just like the Slavic unicorn Indrik. He is the son of power, one who drinks Soma, friendly and always ready to come to aid. And the most importantly, it is Indra, according to the legend, who fights alone and conquers dragon Dritra, the demon of chaos, and his victory is equated to the victory of the dynamic principle, the powers of Alad, over stagnant chaos, the animal mind. 
and it leads to structuring of the Vedic world of white spaces. This battle is the central plot of the legend. If we consider that the ancient Indian Mritra literally translates as a block or a barrier, and that Indra represents spiritual power, then in essence it all means overcoming the animal nature, the spiritual victory of human over himself, his liberation. On this topic we have talked to Indologist, the person who is studying Indian culture. We came to the conclusion that these are some universal grains, the knowledge that was characteristic of each culture. I think yes. This is the unity of human nature in all corners of the world. There are similar teachings, similar spiritual achievements. It's normal, because we are all human. Regarding Indra, you have to look into the root of the world. In Hindi, it means feelings in their initial meaning. Many Vedic hymns are devoted to Indra, and they encourage to help gods to defeat demons. It can be perceived as a fight, which is going on inside a human. The deep understanding of the meaning our ancestors conveyed in such metaphor has come, that there is only one thing helps a person on his spiritual path, in his personal Armageddon, in the victory over oneself. It is the deepest feeling of love that every person has inside. Thanks to it, person makes a choice towards the spiritual development. Without such phenomenon as love, the existence of humankind is not possible in general. We are not talking about love of sweets, salo and bread, but love as the fundamental human phenomenon. Since without love, basically no relation is possible. As I'm saying, it's not the love in our ordinary domestic situations. It's a universal love, including love to God, who supports us. Love is when you give without expecting any response for what you have given. For example, you do something good and you don't wait to get anything good in response. Love is the basis of everything. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Wish you love. I think uh, love is very important. If you, if everyone uh, has love in, in their heart, mm -hmm. I think the the world, the world will peace. And, and everyone's life will be better. Love. And love again, you know? For friendship, there are no boundaries. And for love. After all, love is one. And it just comes from every person. As communication from soul to soul. I found this line in the Upanishads in English. I can read it. Come on. Oh, Agni, you know all the paths that lead me on the success but the good path. Keep me away from the wrong path of seeing. But there is something similar in the first surah of Quran. The way it sounds, it is you who worship and you we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who are astray. This is first, the opening surah of Quran. This surah reveals the topic of choice, that a man is always given a choice which way to go. There are words in surah, guide us to the straight path, and this way, the way of deep feelings, when a person in each day in himself cultivates the love for God sincerely goes towards Him in every moment of life, and these moments make up our life, seconds, hours, days, years. And the most important thing is to learn to live these moments in love with our Creator. Regarding the topic of choice, I would like to underline some comments to the Quran by Al-Hazali, who was an Islamic theologian and jurist. Here you find such an interesting quotes in regards to the Surah 17, Ayat 18, which says, Whoever should desire the immediate, we hasten for him from it, what we will, to whom we intend. 
Then we have made for him hell, which he will enter to burn, censured and banished. But whoever desires the hereafter and exerts the effort due to it, while he is a believer, it is those whose effort is ever appreciated by Allah. In Surah 10, Ayat 108 also says that whoever is guided is only guided for the benefit of his soul, and whoever goes astray only goes astray in violation against it. In the interpretation to these ayats, Al-Ghazali writes, Undoubtedly, Allah could create people with completely different abilities and endow them with other qualities. For example, just like angels that are not able to disobey, or like animals that are guided by instincts and are not responsible for their deeds. Nevertheless, He gave us possibility to differentiate between evil and good and gave us the freedom of choice between these two aspects. That is why the choice one makes becomes a determinative factor, and depending on this, the humanity will either come to the end or will reach the heights of happiness and progress. There are only two ways, the way of God and the way of Shaitan. It depends on us which one to choose. Truly, we have come from God and we are returning to Him. What does it mean? The person has come to this world and we all should strive to comprehend the Almighty. It's the first, to understand, to understand by the heart, to say the words, there is no God except God and to live by the precepts given by Almighty Allah through the Prophets and sacred books. In all holy books it's written to love, love each other. One can live in this world, live in harmony with oneself, with nature and with God, only if he has information. That's why I wish to say that people have not enough education and knowledge. Cognition is in heart. That's why people should try to purify their hearts. In Azerbaijan there is a proverb. That is literally translated as To what your intention is, there will be a home. That is what you will get. This topic about choice is reflected in every religion. Every religion mentions that every human has a choice, and this is the most precious gift from God. This is what makes us different from animals, the fact that we can choose, we can choose between good and evil. When Allah created all humans, He gave us the right of choice. We are not animals. Animals are those that do not have the right of choice. Angels also don't have the right of choice. Only humans do. Okay, the choose are um, led by a big ego. The, if uh, people leave the ego, think about the, the lives and how it's very short and we must use every minute and uh, love each other, then all the um, decided will be uh, another. Every person is solely responsible for his path to God and his relationship with Him. So I think that we shouldn't judge what is evil and what is truly good, and I think it depends on our feelings and if we believe that to be true to ourselves. God burdens no soul except within its capacity. In its favor, it's whatever good it turns, and against it, whatever evil it merits. The world we live in currently nowadays is a. Uh very capitalistic, you know, we care about what's going around us much more than what's going inside of us. That's why a lot of people are unhappy because they're chasing like some kind of big dreams about I want a sport car, I want a big house, I want a lot of money, you know, and they forget about small little things. And I think we need to share our feelings, right? It's up to you. I think you need to be open and just accept other people as well. Yeah, definitely. This means that inside us we have an onlooker who is observing these beautiful and interesting things. But we also have an ego. And when we react to something, we judge it as good or bad. So we have a choice. So this ego, this me, it's me, but in reality, this is not my essence. 
Good and evil exist in this world, and a person is always choosing between the two. Everything depends on what a person is leaning towards. Those who choose good reach heavens, and those who choose evil get the opposite. A person who chooses evil doesn't find happiness in life. No matter what he achieves, he will never be absolutely happy. Until you transform yourself, look at yourself, nobody can ever help you. Sometimes people do prayers, go to church and do fasting, but inside, internally, internally there is no purity, I would say. There are still evil thoughts and deeds. The person in words says one thing, but acts completely different. You can see it. Feel it good, then do. Or feel it bad, then stop to be. God has given us the greatest gift, the freedom of a personal choice. You should be honest with yourself and you should be yourself, because like... If a person is moving towards the goal, he will achieve it. Main thing is to take the first step, it is the most difficult one. Second one is easier, third one even easier, and then you are walking. The trail of spirituality should run through every aspect of life. So, uh, choice in that sense then applies to everything. Like my talking to you is a choice that I make which will finally affect all of my other choices. So whenever we make a choice, finally have a spiritual final destination, that choice will affect them. That choice is for what we make which will affect our life. Many participants of Universal Grain Project have been researching Islam and they send us such a phrase. In Surah 17 it is said that whoever is guided is only guided for the benefit of his soul, and whoever errs only errs against it. And no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another, and never would we punish until we send a messenger. I was very impressed that in Quran and Hadiths it is clearly said about the choice. I have found one ayat which I would like to read for each one are successive angels before and behind him who protect him by the decree of Allah indeed Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves in this surah, the understanding that a person is making the choice by oneself is reflected. God does not make this choice instead of a human. But if a person chooses to serve the God, Allah, then God will be with him. By studying the theme of choice in Islam, we have found similarities in Quran as well as in Bible and in Zoroastrianism. In Hadith 11 it said, O sons of Adam, cultivate for me and get benefit from me, ask from me and do business with me. Indeed, your benefits are from me. They have not been seen by any eye, nor heard by any ear, nor thought by any human mind. The lines from Hadith 11, which have been read just now, match with the lines from the second epistle to the Corinthians. I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Regarding the theme of choice, I have found interesting quotes in Quran and Bible. Interesting that knowledge in Bible and Quran is similar. It means there is written the same in Bible and Quran. I'm going to quote it now. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. We choose only one – life or death. We choose the soul, God or Satan. 
In Quran we can find the following. Follow, O mankind, what has been revealed to you from your Lord, and do not follow other than him, any allies. This means that you should only choose the truth. And not follow the other. It means that you shall choose only one path. We shouldn't follow two paths, only one. It is written also, that is because Allah would not change a favor which He had bestowed upon a people until they changed what is within themselves. This means we have a freedom of choice. We can choose only because we have part of God in us. He gave us the freedom of choice, and no one else can make this choice for us, only individual can make this choice. It's interesting that the same information was discovered by our participants in other religions. The same information is contained in the teaching of the Twelve Apostles. In short, the Didash, it says that there are two ways, one of life and one of death. And there is a great difference between these two ways. The way of life is this. First, you shall love the God who made thee. Secondly, thy neighbor and thyself. First of all, I think life is the common thing we have. Respect for the people is one of the most important values we should have. Love is a part of these values. We can all live in harmony with each other when we find that we're all the same. We need the same. We live the same. It's a matter of people live in different countries and they follow different religions. But if you find out that most religions are based on the same thing to love God and love our fellow human beings, our fellow men as well. And it doesn't matter what you call God, different religions call God different names, but it is the same God. The important thing is uh, respect and love each other and because that is the very important, I think. I mean, God is just as what the main teaching of God is being friendly to each other, love each other, respect each other, live in peace and uh, prosperity. I hope that more people understand that religion, no matter what kind it is, it's just love. Religion, you doesn't see religion. You can just love him. You can you can find who is want to help, <laughs> who is need help. We should be kind, tolerant to each other, love each other, forgive, and always try to solve any problem peacefully. Of course, inside we are all united. It is important to be kind, a good person, to have a good relationship with everyone, so we all can stay united. Not just thinking you, you are in peace, you have to, to act, you have to be in, in your life in peace. You, not just thinking I'm good, mm -hmm. I'm good and you are in your anterior not, not good. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, it is working, you have to work to be in peace, yeah. I think the, the most crucial thing is to be friendly and open to each other and find out that every people have its own specific positive elements, not searching for the negative elements, but looking for the positive way of life and enjoy life and see all the beautiful difference. I'm from Congo, Côte d'Ivoire, West Africa. To have love among us is necessary. We can't live without love and we also must support each other. We know any kind of conflict because if you love your brother or you love your sister, we, we will be all together and there will be no any form of conflicts because we love each other. I think everyone is instinctively good-natured and would help each other out. Um, I believe that we're all naturally decent people and would show kindness and love. I believe that what all people share is the necessity to love each other. 
Subhanallah, all religions say that we need humaneness, mercifulness, most important, mercifulness between totally different people, as you have noted, between Muslims, Christians, representative of other religions and nationalities. Everyone should feel the other one and sympathize with him. The truth that lies at the base of primordial knowledge can be found throughout different religions and different cultures of the world. Very interesting to study it. When I was studying the work of Christian saints, it was like a ring bell for me that the universal brain exists. And truly, in Christian religion there are many such grains of truth that touch your soul and intertwine with the words of Igor Mihalovich, with the words in the books of Anastasia Novich, and with the words in the book Alatra. In Hesychas traditions and in Orthodox traditions exists such a belief as true grace and false grace. False grace meaning it was imitated by Satan. True grace is what fulfills you from within and it's not connected to you the material world. It is spiritual. If you think about false grace that was imitated by Satan, you will only find pride and arrogance in it. There is nothing spiritual there. Spiritual work implies constant confirmation of your choice, meaning you ignore your consciousness. Monks and saints were saying exactly what Igor Mihalic was saying, the necessity of fostering spiritual love and disregard of consciousness. The term sobriety has also been mentioned. It implies the ability to distinguish truth and false. I would like to bring up a quote from the Orthodox Encyclopedia. A person cannot escape from the intentions and thoughts as they are sent by demons from the outside. However, in the power of companion, not to listen to them, not to let them into the heart's crate, distinguishing spirits, distinguish the ideas, thoughts and spirits. God is not in something complicated, but in simple, and that's what we are missing. One of the priests, Islamic priests, we meet very often. He is Imam and I am a Christian priest. We do not differentiate anything. The only thing we do differently is reading prayers. But the idea of addressing God is the same. We are calling for God's grace and His power. To be able to beat the evil thoughts that come to our minds. This means that it is important to have inner sobriety that helps us evade evil thoughts and not fall from pride and consciousness. Because the consciousness will only lead you over the cliff. Deep inner feelings, being filled within, will lead you in the opposite direction. They will lead you to love, happiness and light. They will lead you to life. Still, how can one shift the focus of attention? How can one wake up from this illusion? Observe consciousness and you will understand that you are not consciousness. Put the power of your attention into that place where it is warm, nice and joyful. Seek this joy inside, after all, it's there. At that, the permanent source of this joy in a human being, in the human energy structure, is nothing other than the soul. This is like, on a frosty day, you are standing in front of a wide open door into a room where it is very warm. You feel this warmth coming from inside the room, where it is joyful, cheerful in that room, there is a bright light and it's very warm, while you are in the darkness and in the frost. Well, it's impossible to mistake. You'll arrive anyway. If you want to. So, a personality has only spiritual experience and practice. It is able, owing to its unique perception, to understand the primordial truth globally, to distinguish the good from the bad, to make a choice. And this considerably differs from the artificial work of consciousness. The choice of truth, the real choice of a person, is only one. It is God, it is what He has inside. So, the choice is love. The real choice is love. Anything else is deception and illusion of this world. 
that person is really wealthy who has this love to God. It makes the person truly free and happy. We are saying that God is love, not a judge, not something else, but God is exactly love. That love, which is alive, it should live, it should not be just called so. Human improves himself in God, and when these improvements take place, after all, we are created in His own image, that means we should be like Him. Not even be like Him, but this should be our natural state, the state of our soul, our life. The purpose of life is unity with God. And in this unity we also find unity with people, with all people on earth, in peace and love, in common consent and mutual understanding, not in separation, but in unity, to create peace. We only need one simple thing, the ability to understand people around. We are children of God, meaning we are like Him. But we may be similar to Him in what? in actions related to peace, love, unity. This is what makes us like God. I was always interested in Taoism. One of the Johns, number 67, inspired me. Translated by Malavin. I have three treasures that I cherish wisely. The first one is love. The second is frugality, and the third is that I do not dare to be ahead of others. I love, thus I can be brave, and frugal, thus I can be generous. I have three treasures that I cherish wisely. The first one is love. I do not mean earthly love, I mean the love that comes from God's grace. In Christianity is called the kenosis of the Holy Spirit. The second treasure is care. He doesn't pay his attention to outer situation and short-lived desires. Every second he is working on upkeeping his inner conversation with God that is based on feelings. And interpreter Malavin has an interesting comment to the said above. Here is his translation of the words of Tao Xin Yi. In life it is important to cherish your three treasures. The source of the past is hidden in the unseen and unheard, in the concealed and in reedy. It is what is called holy emptiness, it is nullity, and it is indescribably smooth. They also call it a small pearl. Those who are able to obtain this pearl find love and compassion in their hearts. This tiny pearl is also mentioned in the book Aladra. The pearl itself in ancient rules was called Inchi, which means different, the one, the only, the true one, the right one. Among the many Slavic and other peoples, the pearl was an associative symbol of the soul from another spiritual world. The ancient Russian word Rakovina, Perlamutr, is derived from the ancient word of the Slavic peoples living in Eastern Europe. Raki, Rakve, is a shell, and it is similar to the Latin word Archeo, meaning I lock. That is, pearl in a shell is a symbolic designation of the soul locked inside the material shell of the body, which had been brought here from another world, and which can liberate itself only when the personality fuses with the soul with the help of the spiritual creating power and the dominance of the spiritual nature in a man. It is a key moment when the spiritual nature dominates in a person, then personality fuses with the soul. According to the Prophet Muhammad's saying, the world was created from the white pearl. According to Muslim beliefs, the Almighty created the white pearl, the thickness of which was seven skies and seven lands put together. When God called the pearl to him, it trembled from his core so much that it turned into flowing water. Out of all the creations that at some time of day or night, one way or another interrupt the glorification of the Almighty, it alone, already being water, did not for a moment cease to glorify the Creator constantly surging and foaming. That is why 
God gave it superiority over others, making it the source and the beginning of life of all living beings. So all the living beings were made of water. And in order to carry this precious water, the Almighty created the wind, air, having endowed it with an uncountable multitude of wings. From Alatra Book. So for the human, this period of time, which is spent here, is not the end. It's some kind of birth, so as to be born in the subsequent life. There is another association in India, an egg that is born twice. Because the first time you are born as an egg, and the second time you are born as a bird, out of this egg. You are born to fly, so it can be understood as an egg is the material world where a person's soul must grow and mature. Once his soul matured, he can break from the material world and fly free as a bird. And this bird lives in a different realm. The sky is his life. What you said about becoming a bird and breaking the chains of the material world it helps to understand that a choice really exists. And truly, you choose. In the Alatra book, there is a sentence that says that when a person starts to feel this grain inside him, he doesn't want to choose anything else. Every day, he only wants to focus his attention on this grain. <laughs> Ancient knowledge teaches us that first of all a person must learn about his dual nature and that he is as a personality that has the right of choice. Because the choice of matter is not really a choice. It is also said in the Alatra book that generally a person understands that matter is just an illusion and it is mortal. It will not lead to the eternal life. And that is why ancient people didn't even see the material world as something one would choose. The choice is this state when there is only one wish, to hug the whole world and share this feeling with others. It seems that a person chooses with his feelings, with his spirit, and the moment he understands he is a spiritual being, he feels the spiritual world and he chooses his innate nature. After that, the person starts going in only one direction because everything else becomes no longer his choice. He doesn't reject the material world, it just becomes alien to him. But for people as personalities, this world is nothing else than either a springboard for a jump into life eternal or a chasm to long-term torment. The choice is up to humans. It is possible to choose here, of course, but in order to choose, it is necessary to know what you are choosing. And in order to know, one needs to have experience. And in order to have experience, one still has to work on oneself. The consciousness tells that it is not necessary to change anything inside oneself. One has simply to study, to know something about the external in the three-dimensionality. Sometimes it tells what should be done, to repeat some meditations, exercises or something else, whatever you do. But without a profound work on oneself, precisely from the position of understanding, of knowledge of all these processes, without searching the spiritual world inside oneself, nothing will happen. You will not find the spiritual world in the external. It is only possible to find the spiritual world inside oneself, because a path to it lies through the person. We have already spoken about it more than once in many programs. Well, and before us, many have spoken about it repeatedly. Until a person puts efforts into it, he will never be able to come closer to the spiritual world. And the most difficult and the simplest thing, it is that, first of all, a person has to understand, realize and perceive himself as a personality. He must find himself, the one who he is. The understanding has come. Why initially the knowledge was given to a person, not only about his good side, his essence, but also about the opposite side? And about that, what is awaiting the person in the afterlife destiny, based on his choice? 
Also, it's clear why the knowledge about subpersonalities, about that what is said in the program Suicide, the afterlife destiny, is given. All this knowledge is given so the person could make a conscious choice. And now, when this knowledge is in the world, this primordial knowledge, you know what is really good and what is really evil, and already you decide where to go and whom to serve. And here lies the paradox. It is a paradox only for matter, that a small, tiny, unnoticeable little person, who exists only for a short period of time, when gaining life, when getting free from the slavery of that very system, he becomes an angel, who brings joy to the whole spiritual world, endless number of the same ones. But he comes not as a slave, he comes as an equal. That is the point. All the quotes, the grains that were said, they all are just a small amount of what the guys from all over the world could find in different spiritual literature. But the most interesting and amazing thing is that one can understand all that information thanks to Alatra, due to the information given in Alatra. And it's a great gift from the spiritual world that now every person has the opportunity to see the knowledge in its pure form. Alatra gives a chance to everyone to learn the truth, a chance for everyone to make his or her own deliberate choice. And when you have already accepted that knowledge, and when you see everything expanded, then you get the understanding of unity of everyone, that we all are one whole, that we have nothing to divide, that we all are one, that we are a part of God, and that very same thing is Alatra, that is love and that is God. The books by Anastasia Novik and programs with Igor Mikhailovich Danilov a priceless gift for all people on Earth. Regardless the religion they belong to or country they live in. At the same time, it is a universal key for understanding of all those really spiritual grains which are embedded in every religion. Thanks to this knowledge, it's possible to separate the wheat from the chaff. There is an amazing amount of information there to, you know, to feast on and to, um, to entertain, to, you know, you know, what we're taught in school or what we consider to be prehistoric man be, um, from an archaeological perspective, um, far greater knowledge and understanding of our cosmos and universe than I personally had any idea about. And I, I imagine most people are probably quite similar, they just simply were unaware of it. Um, for whatever reason. So, uh, I mean, I, again, I, I thoroughly recommend anyone that's interested in history, orig origins of faith, origins of uh, politics and political structure, read this book. What makes Alatra so good and amazing is that in Alatra everything is easy, clear, simple. And the truth is always simple, there is nothing to add. Everything is very clear and everything is timely. So now it's that what is necessary. It's a straight path to the understanding of the spiritual grains. And then everything depends on us. People are different. And development may be different. But all, you said correctly, have one divine nature. This nature is very powerful in the manifestation of its love. It's necessary to develop the spiritual nature in oneself, as is the only way to liberation. By using such key as Alatra, I think there is a great chance that we all can be united and we will find our path to enlightenment to the spiritual, the moment all prophets were saying about, great people were writing about, has come, it's time. It has been given again, brought not for the first time. Again, this teaching is brought clearly. I've understood that I should be a part of it, that I can share some knowledge and capacities of mine. All the knowledge required for the transformation of person is given here in a unique, simple way. 
I got a deeper understanding of it all while working with the guys on the project The Universal Grain. I want to thank everyone who is participating, who is seeking, and those people from 140 countries who gave their interviews. When you watch all these interviews and reviews from scientists and from people on the streets, when you hear what they say about the freedom of choice and what spirituality really means to them, you feel that everyone is kindred to you, because we all talk about the same things. Yes, we speak different languages, but the truth is one and the same. In reality, we are looking for the same thing, and the choice for every personality. It's indeed the only one. It's love. What else can you choose besides God, besides love? It's all so simple. All people, regardless of the borders established by consciousness, regardless of all peculiarities of worldviews, all feel, know and understand this truth. And thanks to the actions of each and everyone, today it comes to life. Thanks to the actions of all participants of the Universal Grain Project, the truth becomes visible and accessible to everyone. Participants of the Universal Grain Project with great joy share how during this amazing research process it was possible to discover within themselves this kinship with every person on Earth, this common, one, universal for all Alatra, which unites all of us. When I started to participate in the project The Universal Grain, I started to get to know people of different nationalities and cultures. I find this project very interesting, as it shows the views of people from different countries. Every person is a unique world. I think this project helps to find out more about other people, about their cultures and their thoughts. I learned to feel united with every person and actually experienced that we really are one. When the outside world vanishes and a person stops listening to his consciousness, communication between spirits begins. I agree with you, because that's the Spirit of God talking to us, inside us. So. We really need to listen to him more intensively because most of us now we are so busy doing a lot of things and we just we don't uh, listen to our inner spirit and to really see what we need to choose uh, if we need to do the, to choose the right thing. I think the color of the skin or human race doesn't play a big role to many people. We all here have a special purpose. You just have to find it. If you think about different religions and various gods that came to exist during the past centuries, you will find out that all of them lead you to believe in one Creator, which just give Him different names. Participation in the project The Universal Grain has inspired me, because it allows people to see the same grains that exist throughout different religions, and the truth that is one and the same for all of us. This truth is important to each person, because it's about our purpose of life. The world is a big planet, but it's all together. Although we are different, but we are all human. Yes. We don't always look alike, but at the same time we are all connected through this inner feeling and desire to just live and love. Be united, and we should be together in a, in a one world. Just people, humanity, that's all I think. I feel that one thing that does unite, very close to love, is, is something where we see a common good. Our people are united by love. Kindness and compassion unite us, but God unites us before anything else. United people we be behind the feelings. We are human. We are human, exactly. Yeah. Only the religion is different to us. We are all humans, and we are creating this world that we have. 
usted a Mirka todavía una siesta. We want to get along. We just want to be brother and sister. The normal people out there, the day-to-day -day people walking, doing their job, enjoying life, they just want to get on with each other. And I think in a nutshell, we just want to to be to be more human, to to stop with all these borders, the artificial ones, the ones that we put in our brain. Borders exist in Alpsness, but we are all unified internally. When I became a part of the project The Universal Grain and started to look for information about freedom of choice and about God, my consciousness resisted and I didn't want to continue the search. But during the time of my participation in the project, I gained new experiences and got a deeper understanding. So now when I look for the universal grain in the Bible, Quran, Tripitaka, Upanishads, I do want to search, and those who are looking always find it. Now I understand that I can find it when it's inside me, because it's God's grain. It's inside each of us, and when you inflame, it shines through. You find it everywhere. And when you find it, you no longer want to choose anything else. You just want to keep feeling it. When you watch videos with Igor Mihalovich and read books of Anastasia Novik, you get this deep fulfillment that inspires you to look for the grains of truth. I noticed that those grains that I find in different religions help me support my personal choice. Consciousness gets less chances to manipulate me because I already have arguments ready. And I can say to the consciousness, this is how it is in this religion, and it is the same in another religion, only expressed with the different words. You know, it really makes me feel better. It's like you feel support from the spiritual world. When I was looking for the grains of truth, I found out, and it surprised me, that thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, and much more, people felt the same way we feel today meaning that ancient people felt the same happiness and grew their love the same way we do today. An interesting moment is when you start learning or researching something. You get in touch with other cultures, including ancient ones. You read about them and you come to an understanding that it was natural for those people. This was their purpose of life. They valued spirituality and lived for spiritual growth. When you understand what was the most important in all time, and for my inner, it's natural, and the most real, it's natural for each person. God is part of you. Every opportunity, everything you do, He is part of you. It's God within us that unites us, yes, absolutely. Yeah. The God is always in my heart. In my heart, I always believe that God is here. In every person, there is God. So, you love everyone, God will love you. What can unite us is a feeling of love. The whole world, with its cultural and racial diversity, all of us can be united by love. Then this is culture, and next to love it's curiosity. The desire to know what the other has, what I do not have, what you can learn from others. And all around it is love. Love and unity is what really has to lead us through life. The only energy that actually connects the universe and that's one energy called love. Love is what unites. For love, it does not matter what race you are, nationality or which language you speak, or in which country you live. This, this is the inner thing that everyone can feel in themselves. We're all kind of finding that place in the world, we're all finding where we belong. And the one thing <clears throat> that we kind of provide for one another is that like loving kind of homey feel, like that love for each and every one of everyone in the world, I guess. Like, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter where you're from, but we're all just trying to help each other feel safe, feel loved, feel kind of at home.
We are all people, and so it does not matter what color or what religion you are. We are all people and we all believe in one God, and so we are all the same. The color of the skin, the nationality, the believers, nothing, just to love each other. Yes, and then the world will come the best. By participating in this project, uh, Universal Green, I could find many interesting truths, which is also uh, spoken about in the uh, movie Consciousness and Personality. Such an amazing feeling inside grow that you just want to hug everyone that you didn't know that uh, these people uh, are really your relatives, that they are really having the same uh, belief uh, despite the uh, mistakes and the falsifications that occurred, uh, prophets of their religions talk the same. And it's also important to mention that this uh, project unites people in the spiritual ground. And it brings up all the faiths, all the religions, thus showing that we are really the same. This is something that in the modern world and at a short distance can connect people, although we are all globally dispersed in different places of the planet. When people of different nations, different countries and different religions find common, this is a grain, a common symbol, a common sign in their religion, in their country, in their culture, in their cultural history, because such symbols are only in cultural history. Then you understand that we are all one, that there is no more, the world becomes small, here this island of well-being. And no, there is just no difference. This is certainly a tremendous initiative. It is not just uniting people. It gives such an incentive and you are all, all the time, again, understanding new stages. People from India, I don't know, Sri Lanka, from the UK, from the Czech Republic, wherever they come from, everyone looks at themselves and what we have in common that would connect us. And everyone can find it, because it is impossible not to find this. Everyone has it. Universal Grain is a wonderful initiative. It must be supported and developed. It is basically like a high-speed train connecting with different, different stations. It's a train that flies and people live at this station and they join at the next station. And something new is brought. And this is one train. And around the planet, like this. Here's for me, this is the Universal Grain. The more of such projects there are, that are specifically related to people's unification, so that a person realizes that he is not alone, that these aspirations of his in the knowledge of the truth are not isolated, that he is not the only one who has started thinking and is looking for answers, that there are many people like this. How much beauty there is in the world and the nature of human, and this must be talked about that there is a ray of light in the kingdom of darkness. Thanks to the participation in the project Universal Grain, I realized how science, studying the spiritual heritage of mankind, should look. I think the ways of getting to know the truth are infinite, and the closer we come to its cognition, the broader our horizons will expand in this understanding. There are examples where a person, not knowing the language itself, his soul also responds. He also sees in this native something close. Yes, he feels. We are people after all. And we need to know that we are people and we need to be brothers. Well, it would be better to share the wealth of what you have in culture. We have shown this to you today. Then you came to see us with your culture, for example, sang songs, we talked with you and laughed together. Well, it gives such an uplift of the spirit. And this even gives us the opportunity to develop our culture, so that next time we can also show you something new, right? To keep developing in some way. I would say that we can all live in peace and harmony if we all begin to create that and, and uh, you know, that's the only way uh, we can live a civilized way of life if each one of us makes it part of their life and live it 
then um, you imagine what million people can do. If one person can change the life of a million people, then a million people can change the lives of uh, hundreds of millions. And that is how the wave of peace and harmony will spread. Are you in Kiev? Yes, we are. I was there last year. Using this opportunity, we kindly invited you to come to Kiev more about our Alatra International Public Movement. And I look forward to that. Thank you much. We too. We too. Thank, Thank you. you. It was a great pleasure and I'm very happy to share with all of you. I think that Alatra Group are looking beyond their own eyes, like they're looking forward. So that's really good. For me now, like this could be a really good choice like to know more about you. We wish good luck and try to find out and see what the best you can do to unite uh, everybody together because in today's world, this is one of the major issues, but at least whatever best can be done, that's more important now. Thank you very much for the opportunity because as I said, knowledge sharing is very, very important to what I do as well. So thank you for contacting me and for this opportunity to share with our Alatra TV. Great, thank you. I think that's the big thing, just really finding people who are sincere about what they're doing and don't have ulterior motives, who stand in truth. I think sincerity is the, sincerity is the biggest. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. A nice project, this thing too you know, try to unite everyone. It's so great, I mean, sorry. And that's cool. so cool, I think I love it. And it's more, you know, yeah. massive. Global. Yeah, more global. Participating in this project, as well as in many other projects of the movement, you start to understand that this choice that is made by human, that I make personally, I confirm it not only by my decision, but also by concrete action. You start to act, to make concrete actions. When you simply start doing, then the personality gets this real experience and consciousness has no reason to stop you anymore. We have organized the quiz on the street for the first time, together with Marketa. She came to Berlin and we simply decided that we can do this and did it. And we were really surprised that people in reality are ready to speak on such topics and respond easily. Though before I had a stereotype that one cannot speak about sensitive topics like God, the sense of life, in fact, people respond, share the insights, and we feel the response and hear. You can feel this response when searching for unity, searching for this uniting meaning of life and for this higher goal. And it doesn't matter how many people were asked, almost everyone said the same thing. For me personally, I believe being a human is the fact that unites us, having feelings, to feel things, to understand things, that unites us. Perseverance in the heart, in the heart. I feel that uh, by heart. I pray, my heart, uh, I feel it. I can't explain my feeling. It's uh, maybe every person understands it's by heart. What is it? Truly, we have it. All human kinds have it in themselves. So I think at the end, it uh, makes us like a together. Every person has a soul and it seeks God. Someone knowingly seeks for it, someone unknowingly. But there is inner feeling of the presence of soul, the particle of God. It is precisely that which is common to all nations on our planet. The unity, which is among all people, which can be achieved because of one source, is the most valuable. For me, the most important was to feel exactly it during the work in the Universal Grain project, to feel myself and the single whole with the whole world. I'm very grateful to Alatra International Public Movement for such an interesting project. Due to participation in this project, I have found this common grain. The same purpose for all ancient people who lived before us. 
and it has opened my eyes to the real meaning of life. I've got an experience of participation in the Universal Grain project. It's nice to remember how we interviewed students of different nationalities. It's so nice and joyful that young people understand and realize important values which unite all people, such as love, kindness. There were guys from India and Nigeria, and they were all talking about the same thing. We are all people. It does not really matter what uh, divides us. What brings us together is more and more important and more valuable than whatever it is that is between us. It's such indescribable feeling. It should be in every person. What is this feeling? It's relationship, which improves our connection with, as we are united right now. It has been a nice feeling. The friendliness, openness, hospitality, each person should have. Uh, maybe like just emotion and compassion and feeling and, you know, people will want to be loved. Everybody are feeling the same. It's not about a church. It's about our feelings. It's about being friendly. It's about being kindly with other person. All people are united by the common values, truth, kindness and love. Mutual understanding, love, it will also help us unite. No matter where you're from, of course we have different cultures, and but we all more or less uh, share the same values. The understanding that human to human is human is the most important. And this universal love to give only kindness to those around, no matter either person has joy or grief, we are coming together and with this love we'll get through everything. Now, in 21st century, our task is to spread this concept throughout the world. No matter where is the person, I see a human in him. To find God inside of a um, person, not outside, not just be good outside, but also find God inside. The moment we start feeling uh, God inside, we will start acting outside in the same way. That will be the good, that will be for the betterment of society. Regarding Alatra, I think it's a very good project, as we know. It's not a religious movement, but a global movement, global international movement. And besides, not a commercial one. Its goal is to accept and unite in the whole world. For sure, people in the world speak different languages, follow different religions, belong to different races. But there is such a movement which reunites people from the whole world. And it's very, very great achievement. Okay, well, actually, if there is an organization which is uh, the, which makes people volunteer working, I just, I'm for for that, and it's really good. Uh, but, uh, well, actually, first of all, uh, we need some community to come together and then get the idea, bring up the idea to the people clearly. And if there is an organization like this, so everything will be uh, automatically um, sold out, I think. I feel it's good to bring people together because we get to learn from each other. I think the things that divide us is not knowing the other people. The more we don't know about them, the more we actually feel defensive. But the more we actually know about people, then that actually brings up more friendship. That's what I actually think, yeah. We all are people, it's the most important. We all are same by the inner, we have feelings. And to live all together, you should be open, and I should be open. Another person is just like me, and I am just like he is. The essence is to find common, the unifying grain. Realize that we are all inhabitants of this planet, regardless of skin color, nationality, any other external differences. And all of us, every person, is a part of the whole. People should feel that, despite differences. Speaking about race, skin color, we are similar. We all are people, regardless of the fact that I am from Spain, or from Russia, or from China, all the same.
we as humans, our preferences are maybe different, but we all the same. So I think that as we humans, we can bond to each other. Thanks to the actions of each participant who in his spare time explored, searched, contacted scientists, compounded all this information, shared with each other, the Universal Grain has become a really huge platform for bringing together specialists from different fields, interested people, enthusiasts. And this platform, the Universal Grain, it is first of all inside. This is the platform of mutual understanding, friendship, which is based on the knowledge that in the core of all of us are the same understandings, which are formulated in different words. Somewhere are called by other phrases or metaphors, but along with it, we all feel the same. And the truth inside of us is the same. And thanks to each participant of the Universal Grain Project, it was possible to put together all these grains and see this truth inside. It opens the world and very interesting to see that guys are ready to research something deeper and unknown around us. As volunteers, to meet all the people with happiness, to understand and study their interests, religions. We would like to express gratitude for such a unique opportunity by common efforts to find this unified grain. All together to study, comment, search. The uniqueness is that when many people work on the same, everyone has own associations, own insights, and by combining those we come to the single whole. By studying world religions, I understood for myself that we are united internally. Every person has Alatra inside. There are no separations, that only consciousness divides people. One single grain in everyone and everything that is the same. Asha, righteousness and the laws of righteousness are like a thread. And we all have that fundamental truth in common and what links us. We all started within God. From God we came, from Him we rose, and to Him we are returning. We are all united through our souls. Someone calls it the soul, someone calls it inner core. In Alatra, there is a term personality, which then merges with the soul. We are united by the spiritual nature, which is embedded in us by God. Everyone has a soul, and it's the only thing which is present in every person. And exactly the soul unites us. The people have one heart uh, and pure heart. It can be like, for example, uh, can, uh, we can connect each other. We are. All people on this planet are united by this core, which is inside of everyone. This is kindness. Anyway, in every person, I think there is more good. This unites people all over the world, since each of us has the soul as a part of God the power of God, through which we can feel each other. And strive for perfection. And ultimately, this part, the soul, will unite with the spiritual world. The unity of the spiritual people is the most significant. Personality, yes, the spirit unites, everyone has a personality. The soul of a person is that ephemeral substance that fills us from within. It is our conscience, our sensibility, our love, all our good feelings that are always in us. And this is what always unites people. This is exactly good feelings. Only love of Allah, His presence, faith in Him, His power, omnipotence, unites all people of the earth. Despite the fact that we are all different, from different countries and different nationalities, all are united by divine love. The main thing 
is the unity of people in love and tenderness. A lot for me is the happiness inside. There is an inner joy, this knowledge that exists, which really gives you an exact knowledge and confidence. In the project Universal Grain, people from different countries and religions find the one and unified grain that unites everyone. For myself, it was a real revelation that in all religions and nationalities it talks about the same thing, that the world is inside of each person, that inside everyone there is a connection with God, and in order to be with God there is no need to blindly believe religion, to follow the covenants and traditions. All people on our planet, in our city, in our country, it's one. By immersing into the deepest feeling, becomes clear that there is no other person, no other family, no other city or country. Everything is one, united, it all is you. We are similar, we are one human, and there are no difference between us or another culture or another country. We live in one, in one small house, in one country, in one planet. Yeah, I think it comes from your own feelings and your own morals. It doesn't have to do with any religion. It comes from inside. I believe that regardless of different religions, people can agree to live in peace. We should be united because we are all humans and we shouldn't think about any kind of differences when it comes to our color, our religion, our beliefs and all that. We should just care for each other and stay in peace with each and everyone. If we raise ourselves and everyone around us will begin to change. Therefore, if there will be peace inside you, the world will begin to change around you. And you look at this world with new eyes and maybe what you didn't notice in other people, you can notice now. After all, in other people we can only know what is inside us. And if we have this world inside Inside, then we see it in another person. If you have love, then you see this love in another person. It has been told by the Holy Fathers that first you need to gain peace in your own soul. When a person is calm, quiet and peaceful, those in the family next to him will also be awarded with the same condition, perhaps. Also, everyone is from a different area or from different country, but I think um, everyone hope peace in the world. Thanks to my job, I have traveled a lot, and I can say that in all religions people don't differ from each other. The desire for peace is stronger than is shown by mass media. The main, I guess, that people should understand each other. Then there will be peace in our country and on our planet. A world where, no matter what culture, what background you are, you get on. Why? Because there are universal grains. There are possibilities to actually realize, yes, we are the same. I may have been brought up this way, you may have been brought up that way, but actually they're the same fundamental values that we all have, that we all share. Your, your, your religion, whether you're a Christian or a, a Muslim, we all, we should see ourselves together as one people. And if we see ourselves together as one people, that is the greatest love of all. And that's how come we can, we can live peacefully in, in our society. Let peace and unity be all over the planet. All people are united, definitely, by common values. First of all, kindness. I think all people have love for peace and harmony. The world should be like one family. It should start in one's family. Then only make all world unite. The person should feel like he has peace in himself. Then only he can prosper with, within his family. If in his own family there is peace, he can spread this, that peace in his village, village to state or country, country to the world. I think that we are all united to start with. We are all united, all the, from different countries, we are united. We need to be together, to be friends. In unity with other people, when they are united, not just as different people, 
when everyone is good on his own, but when all are united by common nature, indeed, in the face of God, and we act together. And I think if we all have that love for each other, then we can overcome those differences. So in original, we are the same uh, kind of... <laughs> are we all humans? It doesn't matter religion, uh, matter of only love, we humanity. When you love, you live for it. I think in South America, mm -hmm. the people believe in God and we can travel in Spain and they still love the same God and they can share that love and feeling neutral. Mm -hmm. They can feel closer to other persons. Mm -hmm. and even if they don't live in the same country, they can feel like the same people. Mm -hmm. I think I, I wish that people would look a little bit beyond themselves, like not only to what they want, but also what good is for the rest of the world. It's very important for, for leaders to to unite and not to divide. And I think that's yeah. what's happening in the world today is more and more leaders tend to divide people than yeah. unite them. Yeah. And I think we always have to remember there's more things we have in common. Let's look at everything with humor and love. Not search for conflicts only to find. I welcome your movement, the universal grain. We should be about all of this and come a little closer to the Supreme. And then we will discover that it's spiritual, honest, wise, the kindness that there is. What connected us? Alatra. The work of Alatra is for what we believe in. This is exactly what my religion dictates. And of course, any other religion. Spirituality of soul connection. I really appreciate what Alatra is doing. Well, I think spiritually we are not different beings. We are we are one. We are one body. I believe that all of us as a human beings are um, part of Allah Spirit or God's Spirit are in every one of us. Yeah. So basically, that is that unites. Brotherhood, peace, love, unite people. I think love unites people. For love, there are no boundaries, no continents, no nationalities, no religions. If you love, you live, you are happy, you share this love with your loved ones. I am Muslim, and I have many Christian and Jewish friends. I don't look at people from the religious point of view. I observe how a person is behaving. I honestly say that everyone is good. Religion to each independent person, what they believe in, I don't think religion can unite people, it can also divide people. However, I think it's people's beliefs aside from religion. At the end of the day, regardless of what divides us, maybe religion, race or ethnicity, um, I think that we're all humans. And regardless of what divides us, whether it be nations or religions or whatever, we're all here together. In search of religion, we forgot God. So because we actually forgot God, we actually forgot the thing which actually links to the God, love, which is love, humanity and friendship. So the more we actually stop think, not thinking more about religion, but thinking about God, then we can actually bring all those three things together. Peace, love, fraternity, friendship. Then we can actually build a uh, world, a more an ideal place to live in. That's what I think. All the people, they are kind of a... Uh, they are not born to kind of uh, separate mm -hmm. between each other. So they are. There is no, uh, for example, children. They they don't behave like uh, mm -hmm. they consider they are same. Yeah. So, 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 religion. We have to be. Uh, I, I have to be with him. I have to, to help him. The only um, solution that I drew is that we have to help each other. And everyone is uh, is linked to each, each another. Jo aapi zarurat hai, zarurat pe dhyan de. Undoubtedly, human is the highest creation on this planet. Creation which has humanity. This quality is what unites us. This project helps people to wake up and understand that in all the religions and languages there is something universal which unites us.
It helps people to understand that they are not separate territories, believers of some religion. We all are human, and we are all united on this earth. We have the same purpose. Indeed, when a person starts feeling that he has this grain inside, then there is no wish to choose anything else. And every day he returns to this grain, again and again. The book Alatra is an encyclopedia of life. I think everything God has given us is gathered here. This knowledge is absolutely essential for a person to be a real human. The mind and consciousness divide us. Alatra unites us. There is no such separation as Muslim or Christian. Alatra shows the real path. The one who has found the right path comes to Alatra. Alatra for me is the true life. Alatra uniting people in the whole world. Alatra Very happy to have found the Alatra information and the Alatra people. Alatra is the божественная суть, которую мы должны прочувствовать. Нас объединяет эти знания. Вот эта искренность, вот эта доброта, нести это в мир, дарить, отдавать. Алатра это работа, которая происходит внутри тебя. Ты понимаешь, что ты часть чего-то очень большого и хорошего, и что люди вокруг тебя на самом деле родные. Алатра нас всех исправит до одной цести. От цести к Богу, от цести к самому себе. When you read the book Alatra, you can find the beauty of all religions. In fact, Alatra is something universal, and the information and that pure knowledge are universal as well. Whoever you are, a Muslim or a Christian, it does not matter. The important thing is that you choose love and you start working on yourself. And especially today, in Europe, in Asia, in America, in Africa, the number of people who choose this way is growing every day. And these people are beginning to unite in solidarity, in assistance, in love, and they start helping other people around. But first of all, they try to help themselves, find happiness within themselves, and when this happiness is found, they begin to go deep into love, and after that, the person already automatically ceases to be an egoist. We are taking part in the project Universal Grain. We read the books of Anastasia Nover and also the book Alatra. It was very interesting and important. And the book made us realize an interest to this project. For a while we explored historical topics, religious, cultural, and very glad that there are people in different countries and that we can communicate with them, meet and exchange information that we have found. The project Universal Grain is very useful for all people on Earth. It unites all people, each person, if someone wants to study some material, and by using the keys which are shown in the books by Anastasia Novik and in the program Consciousness and Personality from the Inevitably Dead to the Eternal Alive, he will be able to find these grains everywhere. For me, participating in the project Universal Grain, it's not just something to do or a hobby. This is a deep inner need. And then there is such joy inside when you realize that friends are walking next to you and we are all striving for the same goal. Already, real understanding comes that we are a united team. Ultra international public movement will see change people, will just bring a lot of things. And what we know that can see unify people to speak one thing. 
in the union of love because the union of love meaning there will be god thanks to the fact that we share information among the participants of the universal grain it becomes easier to understand many of the points that are set out in the sacred books in the text and also in the ethos I think the Universal Green um, is an excellent project, very similar to what, in my mind, I have always called the common thread. If you just look at uh, the other person as just human being, I think that's where the connection becomes. This is the union of people. There is no difference, nationality, religion, what they adhere to. You must always remain a human. What I can say is, uh, God is always the first. That's the main thing. What will come tomorrow, what will come in the future, we all don't know, but God knows what will come. So, The spiritual world, it's all grounded within ourselves. But spirituality, I think, is something that's true in the essence, in the deepest essence of ourselves. And so I believe that being having a spiritual life or spiritual world uh, is important, but individual. Of course, if there is humanity and mercy, then people are not divided by anything, no boundaries. Narrow thinking and narcissism, that's what prevents from communication. But in fact, all people are equal. No one is above or below another. Allah looks at the inner and your attitude to others. And this is much more important than following religious traditions, prayers, fasting, hijab. This is what Islam reflects. Alatra unites us. Yes, of course, we speak different languages and dialects, but in general, we are all people. What I often think about, and what I wish to everyone, is to think not just about yourself, but to think about those who are around, to take care of people who are around, of friends and wish them happiness. From such simple things and moments, joy is born. And this energy of mutual concern unites people, and thanks to this, the whole world is getting better. Involvement in another person, caring, is very important. And I would like for everyone to have within themselves this humanness for each other. I wish that people always listen to this channel, which will revive them, direct them in the spiritual, in order to be able to know God, to achieve the knowledge of God and the completeness of God. Now, I'm really glad. God bless you and wish for Alatra TV to be blessed and everything to be good. For all those people who are around the world doing good to mankind, it all started with them. It's a conscious decision. You need to make that decision for yourself. And my message to everyone doing good out there is every little small act that you do makes a difference within each and everyone and everyone can do good. People of goodwill, this is a result of goodness and it comes from inside, from faith in everything you do. Therefore, only a pure path and road are open to all the influences that are a part of the program. And I think that many people will support it. This is a very nice thing. I wish all the best in implementing it. I'm very grateful to Alatra International Movement and to all those people who are in it and do everything sincerely from the heart in order to help others to know the truth. These guys are bringing good, bright and huge work. Many millions of people join them. These people realize in their heart and soul that this is what they have been always looking for. I would like to encourage each and every one of us, just like we said, we said God is love. Try to show, to show some love to everyone, irrespective of what they do to you. Even if they deny you, still show love. The only thing that, come, that brings us together is God. The more we find a common ground between ourselves, the more peace we can have in the world. We wish that this message will create a good impact to people who are watching it. A positive change, you know? So that is what we want. Wishing peace, friendship and unified spirit, goodness always wins.
Most importantly, we wish peace, goodness and friendship. I would like to wish all lot of people the best. All their efforts uh, are blessed by the Lord Almighty and that everything they do, they do it with fullest. I would like to welcome all friends of Alatra, and I wish this movement, this association, become an example for all people, brings peace and encourages brotherhood among people, because we all sincerely wish that. A wish from the beautiful city of Rome. Just live the, the moment and help each other and uh, hug each other. That's all. I would like to wish everyone not to stop good deeds. Because if people are more likely to do good things, they will just be kinder to each other. Therefore, experiencing feelings of love for all, for each other person can find happiness. Not in some words, not by some criteria, we must unite. And we must unite for the sake of Allah, for God's sake the only creator of all these worlds. We simply have nothing to divide, and yes, there is no need to divide us. It's just we simply have to drop our whims, our ambitions aside, and love for the sake of Allah. To put into effect at the behest of Allah Almighty, live in peace. Is it difficult to smile at your neighbor? It's hard to ask, oh, Ivan, for example, Ivan, how is your health? And he said, thank you, Rafis, everything is fine. After all, our father has no Russians, no Bashkirs, no Tatars, no Arabs. Allah Almighty will not look at our faces, He will look into our hearts. What's in your heart? If love, then welcome to paradise. The meaning of life is unity with God. And in unity with God, unity with people, with all the people on earth, in peace and love, harmony and understanding of each other, and not in separation, but in unity, to create a world, you need only the simplest thing, the ability to understand another person. All right, well, I wish, uh, I think it's a wonderful project and uh, really, really respect to you guys for putting this together. I think uh, more and more people like you should be around, I mean, everywhere in the world, so so we can just, you know, promote unity and peace and prosperity. Uh, so I wish you really a great luck and I hope more and more people join this project and be a part of it. There's a lot of distractions, but as you are asking people these questions, as you're getting people to refocus from the world back to their spirituality, back to God, um, that's bringing more light into the world. I think we get so caught up in everything around us that we really forget like why we're here, why we're living the life that we're living, and why we do the things we do every day. Um, and that it all goes back to God. <laughs> it all goes back to, like she said as well, um, being his child and just slowly making our way back. In fact, this is what is inside us. Call it God or somehow. We are basically this energy, and it depends on us how certain things happen. It all depends on us. Not on religion or anything else. At the right moment, action happens only through an internal decision of your own. And it does not depend on anyone but only on you. I think that every person is um, is like the same in this world, and the only thing that we have to remember, and we we are who we are, and we can become who we want to be. Now is the time of changes, and they start from within yourself, from your heart, and from your thoughts. If I love God, if I love you, it means I love God because God is love. He is the Father. I believe that this is what unites us. I belong to Christian religion, but I believe that God is the one who unites all people because He is the God of love. He is the God of love, the Father and the Creator of everything. I can say it a thousand times, it is God who unites all people.
I find some people is different for my language, for my country, for uh, for uh, everything is different. But what's the inside for uh, these people? A good heart, good feeling for uh, different people. What you say for another people? What you doing for another people? That's inside you. you. Keep it the religion. Okay, the different religion. But what's the inside the human? I think the major thing that societies haven't gotten right with spirituality is, you know, they have uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> boxed it for real life is this and spiritual life is this. You know, like practical life is this and spiritual life is this. But actually what needs to happen is everyday realities is where spirituality needs to come in. Business, education. Everything needs to be founded on spirituality. And when I say spirituality, I distinguish it from religion. You know, I mean, religion is when you get into my religion, your religion. I'm talking about just spirituality. Whichever way you are communicating with a higher power. It doesn't matter if you belong to a Christian, Islamic or any other religion. The most important is that you are a human. We must see each other as humans and we must help one another. Because we are one family. We must take care of each other and ignore our differences in appearance. Who is big, who is fat, who is skinny, because it doesn't matter. What matters is to be able to find what unites us all, not what divides us. Here in Angola, Africa, we have a saying. I don't know how to translate it into Russian exactly, but it sounds like this. When the sun is shining, it is for everyone. It does not differentiate on your origin or the color of your skin. It does not divide and it is for everyone. Therefore, we live in one house and in this house we must treat each other like brother or sister. We must love each other. I believe this is the most important law, to love each other. We are all united in God. I was so excited that the ultra public movement and the universal grain project and all of the participants what you are doing in trying to spread the word that we are all one that we are all love and if we were to focus on love and not think about the separateness of all the different cultures the different religions and if all humanity were to come together what a wonderful wonderful beautiful place this would be I believe there can be, and I love the fact of your, both of your organizations, the Ultra Public Movement and the Universal Grain Project, it's a start. It is absolutely a start, and I think it's fantastic that all of you have come together and are doing this. I also know that this project is a wonderful project, and it is doing wonderful things in the world. And it does create understanding that there is one God, one infinite presence flowing in and around and through all. And we are all, all people, all cultures are one with this higher presence. How people come together to help people. People pull together to help people. And they don't ask, what religion are you? They always have come and help. So. Humanity does have a desire to survive. Humanity does have a desire to help each other. And if we all turn back to God and know that God wants only good for all of his children, the greatest and highest good for all, and we rest in that belief, we send out good energy, loving energy, and know that only good will unfold. Nara, it's changing. Yeah. Look at you and your organization. Yeah. <laughs> I was so happy to see you. I feel like it is changing. To be united is but choice. Whether you choose it or not, that's down to you. Because nobody else can make the true choice for you, for I. But as individuals, we have to maybe realize that it's time. It's time to be an adult. It's time to look at this world and realize, let's change for the better. It's doable. Because once again, it's time that we just realize we are all the same. Universal Grain gives the understanding of the fundamental truth, which is 
We all are from one race, humanity. We all live in one place, Earth. It's time to unify and bring love and kindness into this world. True love, true kindness. And let's find the common values with each other and understand that we are all alike. We are actually the same, just living in different borders that are put subconsciously. It is time to realize that we are a modern civilization. We have the tools and ability to change. It's time to put the world and our future in our hands.